Okay. Yeah. Pirates of the Mesozoic. Starring Donald Von Griffin. Karen Torres. Leslie Dannenberger. Bud Montgomery. I'm always lost to the list. I'm going to make higher uh, uh, location on the market. I, I don't <laughs> control it. It's just it goes left to right. Alphabetical. Right. Yeah. Get, and, get, uh, bored, get, get bored to a family with a different thing next time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Me as GM, Brandon Black. Oh, tonight's game brought to you by uh, E&J VSOP Brandy. Wow. They would put more letters on the label if there was more room. Because <laughs> it's one of those weird things. All right. Uh, last week. Um, in arts and crafts and housewares topics, you've got your water purification plant set up. You've got your power plant, your thermo dynamic power plant thing close to working and people are you don't have the piping put in to supply the town entirely yet but you have it going to a water tower which used to be used for the railroad right and people can come just fill up their jugs and mugs and whatever from there and eventually you i can imagine you'll spread like a, a simple water distribution system or something yeah. just do like the romans and put fountains on every street corner something like that yeah that sounds completely reasonable. Um, let's see. Your first generation robots built second generation robots, and they're doing most of the work. Um, the second generation robots in their free time are working on third generation robots. So, uh, so that'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> let's see what else is going on. Uh, you are also working on your centipede mobile, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, the kraken. Yes. The the, the oh wait, no, no. What was what was it? We're gonna call it the Eleanor Creedy. The Eleanor Creedy, which will immediately get uh, devolved into the Eleanor Rigby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> which will initially will just be a, the Eleanor. It'll initially just be a boat, if I understand correctly, and then you're gonna add multiple um, yeah, modes that, of uh, transit. Yeah, it's a it's a bug, and then I'm gonna just start tacking on the. Uh, uh, oh, so what's the, what's the what's the core framework for the boat? Is is it the is it the mobile broadcast van? <clears throat> um. Well, I, su I suspect the truck part of the mobile bro broadcast van with the body stripped away. Is pretty much going to be the mechanicals department. Okay. Um, that because that's going to be the engine and um, electrical and all. Uh, I was thinking I'd build a boat. All right. I was thinking I'd build something. Well, I can see you using the, like the chassis from the truck part with the engine just in place, and then you can build off of that, I, sh I imagine. Lord knows you're going to have enough structural uh, uh, aluminum or whatever from the trailer part of the rig. Yep. Okay. And I have no mechanical aptitude whatsoever, so I will be completely unable to help. Well, that's reasonable. I see. I my thought was a uh, was an East Coast, uh, you know, a uh, basically a North Sea uh, schooner. Uh, half catch rigged, square top sails. Yeah, it's way too big. I've, I've actually found some pictures <laughs> that I thought looked um, semi-appropriate, but most of them are too big. They're like they're like full-size, ginormous ships. Um, not sure even what to call that. 
Oh, uh, no, I'm pretty sure this was a... Actually, uh, this... Oh, my gosh. I think I found feet, something. Yeah, a couple um, feet. Take, I'm going to share something with you, if I can find a good picture of it. Okay. No, come on. I want the picture. I don't want that. It's like a link to a video. Oh, here we go. I got it. Okay, so dig this. I don't know. Maybe this may not. You don't. You 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 don't have to use this. It's just because if you if you look very carefully at the middle part of that, that is a yeah. box. So I could totally see the core of this being the mobile broadcast van, and then everything else is just stuff that has been like <laughs> assembled and built okay. onto it. See, this is this is what I was thinking would be, you know looking looking something kind of like this that sail yeah okay oh i yeah, like his awesome. airships better <laughs> well it's it's <laughs> donald's the one who paid the point for vehicles so he gets to choose yeah um and then basically the sails all retract uh maybe even the mass will you know telescope down or whatever and out of the ribs of the boat come the legs and that that's what makes it into a land vehicle except to get the legs to work I had to end up jointing the keel and now, now she sails like a snake <laughs> alrighty <clears throat> so last okay so that he's, he's working on this monstrosity um, let's see what else is going on uh it's a good thing you've got fresh water because oh you also the you blew um, up all the death knights you blew you blew up a couple of dozen dread knights dread 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 guard the dread guard um, black knights dread guard their official name is the dread guard if you if you care okay. anyway and, and the dread guard commander okay. who who uh, so Brandon is Isco bisected with his flaming sword. Uh -oh. Brandon? Yes. I'm looking at about a hundred and twenty foot long, twenty foot wide. Um that sound about right? <laughs> it's your vehicle, man. It's just, gonna, it's just gonna get blown up. You know that right. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, even after I make it sense here, it'll become a lovable character. It's going to be Phil and the Lamborghini Countach all over again. <laughs> <laughs> the Coon Tank. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I liked my picture. <laughs> I'm offended yeah. you didn't like it. Oh, I like that. Well, it's one. not I like I drew it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll cool. get over. So. Well, no, it's just not what I was thinking. I was thinking he he actually wants a ship. Okay. Rather than an airship, because he's a North Sea fisherman. And also, he's trying to blend in a little bit, just yeah. a little bit, until until he needs to, and then it's gonna the ship's gonna do something freaky and <laughs> like what? Like walk on land? Yeah, exactly. It's you know we'll be uh, we'll go and we'll visit the pirate crew, and if things go wrong, we jump on our ship, we dare them to follow us, we let we let them stay close enough that we run them toward the sandbar, and when we hit the sandbar, we go up on legs and crawl up over the. Well, if it was the airship, the, the ground the, because they're they're standing in shock at what we've just done. If it was the airship, the 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 the, the dirigible part, the yeah. the bladder would would just collapse down like a collapsible cup, and 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 then just retract down when you went to walking mode. See, yeah, or or yeah. Or, or, or ship mode. Why not yeah, just like all that. three? He doesn't like mine. He wants a he wants a traditional schooner, which is fine. Well, yeah. actually, I like I, I like the design aspects of the top part and the sides. Actually, I wouldn't mind a picture. They get that picture, just so I can. But he, but I, I I know what he wants. It's sort of like it's just that the the middle part can't float. I don't know if you do like a, a paddle wheel steamer. You could put four paddle wheels on it and make them uh, wheels, in addition to being paddle wheels. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you blew the hell out of a dozen, uh, two dozen, dreadguard. You defeated the dreadguard commander. Yes. Um, 
the interior smoky parts of which uh, flew away. Yeah. So, and then the Hag of Crag Keep did some sky riding, uh, surrender the thinking machine, and uh, John Erlang flew up imp improbably high and <laughs> damaged uh, the Vroom Vroom. Uh, she regained control and <laughs> cooked off to the horizon because this was not the day for a confrontation with someone who can fly and do that. So, discretion, oh, no, is, the discretion is the better part of valor. Uh, the Hag of Crag Keep is <laughs> not generally somebody who fights her own battles because people who do that tend to lose eventually and she has no intention of ever doing that. So, there you go. We just leave us with the piano, which wants to stay a piano, and go away. She has nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's a, well, no, I've, I've made a promise to the people. I'm going to go I give a talk to her because she scared these people, and that is not polite. She needs to learn to be a good neighbor. <laughs> and so I'm, I need to go have a talk to with her now. Anybody else want to go? She's another on? one like, I'm sure she's another one like the Edge Lord who, now that she knows he has power, wants to flaunt it. Yeah, probably, which is why we need to go tell her that she needs to be polite. Mm -hmm. And if she is polite, there's no problem. If she's not polite, we have a problem. Uh, she obviously doesn't want to deal with us. So. I'm going to you do all the talking there, because diplomacy isn't really my strong suit. Oh, it's not mine either. I just demand it of people until they give in. Yeah, but you know, if I go to talk to her, I'm just gonna talk until the conversation gets boring and then try and cut her head off. Yeah, let's shy away from that. <laughs> <clears throat> well, as you're sitting around drinking beer or whatever you tap in a drink and chatting, oh, Tandy has a new gin recipe she wants somebody to try. Here, try this. Oh, Captain, can you create a device to pull CO2 out of the air and then infuse it into water? Ooh, fizzy water. Yes. Carbon filtering. Let me work on that. That's, okay. that's not as easy as it sounds. Hmm. Yeah, I know you can't get the little carbon or the little CO2 cartridges like you could at home. I was just curious because I'd like to start making carbonated water. Everything around here is kind of flat. Mm -hmm. It's true. Even the beer is kind of flat. Oh, well, she just needs better yeast then. Yeah. And she needs to create it in an environment where it's not 95 freaking degrees all the time. Yeah. Oh, oh no, that I can help with. Okay, so. Dig a, dig a hole in the ground and make a cellar. It's problem solved. No, look at all the <laughs> seawater that we're already pumping through town. Very true. Rain. It rains. Yeah. Oh, it, it yeah. rain torrential rain. The temperature drops from its normal, cool and calm, uh, tropical ninety-five to about eighty-five, and stays there for several days while it pours down rain. The robots don't mind. The people in town are kind of used to it that this just happens, so they still go out in the fields and work and do their thing. They come back really muddy. And the mud's like this mustard yellow looking mud. It's really unappealing. But uh, other than it being just really, really wet and muddy and all the streets are muddy and everything, everybody just soaking wet all the time. Uh, other than that, there's no real side effects to the rain. It's not like, are we it's, it's, not a, it's not a chain storm. It's a normal torrential rain for like three solid days. Are we talking yellow like uh, sulfur or yellow like sodium? I'm, 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 I'm nervous to give you an answer because I think no matter what I say, you're going to make a bomb out of it. So. <laughs> that, I saw a great video on YouTube today about make, making white phosphorus and red phosphorus. It was quite a fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to like YouTube, really. <laughs> well, since one of one of my science fields is chemistry, I've more than likely tested the soil at one time or another in yeah, the, well. the simplest ways I could. And now that we have our van and a little bit more of our technology, I probably could test it a little bit. 
let's 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 not worry about okay. this well, right. apparently apparently <laughs> there is a kind of clay called Montmorillonite clay that is technical class I mean its chemical name is sodium bentonite. So it is sodium based. Uh sodium. Since you since you were curious, yes, it's it's got a lot of sodium. Yellow kaolin clay apparently also has sodium in it. So there you go. And after I just sticky rolled my shirt, you come back to add more cat hair to it. How nice of you. There you go. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Let's see. Dr. Anna makes soap. Michael's making nails and hinges and bullets. Hey, Craig shows up. Hey, I'm oh, here. I'm uh, yeah. Here. I'm for now. Okay. Hello, hello. Shh, hey, let, let me let Craig talk. What's up, Craig? What's up, Craig? Yep, I'm I'm here checking in. I'll uh, just listen in until I get up to my room. Okay, cool. Okay. You haven't missed you haven't missed anything. Okay. Okay. I, you, I, I, you, I, you guys I, good? Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, we're here just fine. Okay, I knew I knew sodium bentonite from somewhere. Okay, good. You're gonna make a bomb, aren't you? No. Um, no, sodium bentonite is the stuff is a uh, EPA grade sealant. It's what they make you put under a landfill. Oh, crazy! When you when you seal off a landfill, put a layer of sodium bentonite. Uh, yeah, sodium bentonite. Cool. It's it's a. Oh, appar apparently, reaction. the ground around the town and under the town is lousy with the stuff. So awesome. Okay, there's our there's our plumbing and sewage system. Roman style. Currently, they just dump their garbage and sewage out into the lake. <laughs> so. So, 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 sodium, sodium bentonite uh, pipes, though. Uh, the old Roman style clay pipes. I sodium see, bentonite I see. Will, will last many times longer than the Romans. And so, you know, a couple millennia. All right. Um, <laughs> on the third day after the torrential rain. Uh, somebody comes running to wherever anybody happens to be hanging out. It's out. Mm -hmm. It's it's because it's been raining so much. There's not a whole lot, and even when the rain kind of lets off, it's still crazy muddy outside. So people tend to gather in common places like the Red Dog Saloon. Um. Oh, here's a question. Red Dog Saloon. They're they're basically now two places where people hang out um well there's actually a third the the courthouse uh, which is where the mayor's office is uh, has a courtroom well since the town's chapel was replaced by a buddhist monastery a few years ago during a chain storm they haven't had a chapel so huh. Uh, Edge Lord basically forbade any of that because he was hardcore atheist. And but since he's gone, a certain number of townspeople have started gathering on a day they have decided to call Sunday. Because they don't know, it's just a random day. But they, they had to pick a day, and so there you go, today's Sunday. And so they they have kind of vague non-denominational church meetings in the courthouse. So that that's like one group of people. It's a fairly small group of people, but they're regulars. Everybody else either hangs out at the Red Dog or the um, the, tea, the Tea Room, which is the name of which I have... Bittersweet. The Bittersweet, yeah. Or they hang out at the Bittersweet. So uh, the group that hangs out at the Bittersweet tends to skew male but other than that, it's generally the same people. Uh, what do you guys sing out? It's Red, Red Dog still? Red Dog, and I'm guessing Michael being a good Irish Catholic boy is probably going to chapel every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, well, they're clearly not Catholic. Oh, I know, but he'll go, he'll go just, just on principle. <laughs> yeah, Red Dog. Yeah, they I'm seem to be some... To I'm still trying to figure out how to get her the makings of a decent rum. <laughs> well, she's short on sugar-based things. Uh, she makes a really good tequila. 
unfortunately, she can only make a very small amount of it at a time because you have to kill the plant to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And then grow one. Yeah. And it and it takes years for the plant to grow to to really make like an particular an ongoing thing. They'd have to actually start a plot in the uh, town's farmland just oh, for God. those plants. Yeah. <laughs> and so far, she yeah. has. Hasn't... Convinced well, other no, people that that's worth it yet. The hmm? um, plant that makes the, the, the tequila is it, is it does it is it producing sugar or do they need some kind of plant that produces it is actually sugar? I mean, because you said not too much stuff is sweet here. No, that's for the rum because Donald was talking about rum. Yeah. So yeah, but she I mean, doesn't she doesn't have a rum because she. But she, we don't they, have any. Do we have any sweetener here or any kind of sugar or anything like that? Not that the townspeople know about. If we uh, find something, it's most likely going to be faster growing than some, than what she is making the tequila from. So oh, it'd that would be. be it have to be. And if, that's, if something, um, that's something the biologist in uh, in Michael can probably work on doing too, is taking this plant and seeing if he can figure out a way to make it more hearty. Uh, okay. You need a you need like a big starchy uh, plant like mm-hmm. potato or something like that. Yeah. Or or fruit. Yeah, so, uh, something fruit. And you've seen fruit around, yeah. but at the moment, all the fruit you guys have had access to are essentially citrus. Mm-hmm. So, and which peach, is not, 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 not great they, for are, they, hmm? are the peaches citrus, or are they actually peaches yeah, or something similar? I don't want any of uh, the other ones. Oh, okay. the peach fruits. Um, yeah, that's not citrus, is it? No, no, they're not citrusy. They're, But they're not actually all that sweet. Uh, okay. They're more like peach adjacent. Oh, <laughs> they're about as sweet as a, as a sweet potato. I'm willing to try something. Okay, well we'll have to. I said Michael will have to apply some biology and see yeah. if he can figure well, out a just, way to make it. You know, the, start going on trips. You could, more hardy. You guys could become prospectors, which are the yeah, dozen true. or so people in town who just travel the wilderness mm-hmm. looking for interesting things and then bringing them back when they well, actually, survive. Brandon, that was one of the things that I wanted to start doing was just going out with any expeditions that are going out beyond the walls. Because I want to find out more about the like the flora and fauna of the area. Mm-hmm. I wanted to find out if there's anything else out there of interest. Um, and um, I wanted to, to, to mo- more civilize or at least more establish the route between here and the Chinese city, um, whose name I can never remember. Wangkwa. Wangkwa. Yeah. And yeah, try and make that a little bit more travel a uh, road so that people don't have to worry about getting eaten traveling between them. Well, there is actually a road um, that apparently predates both Wangquo and Tranquility. It's like an old Roman road. Yeah. Uh, I mean, literally, it looks like an old Roman road. It's like great big stones. Uh, so, you, oh, actually, so that's what that's what's going on right now. So, John Erlang yeah. sitting around the Red Dog. Uh, with some beers, talking with some of the established prospectors and some of the younger people who want to start doing it, and talk about where they're going to go next. At which point, oh, and, and uh, Sheriff Hood, Sheriff Rose is yeah. there, just because she likes to know what people are doing. Really, it's more the mayor's job to kind of know what folks are doing, but the mayor is more of a delegating kind of person. So, anyway, so or a hands off. He's, right? he's kind of a hands off kind of guy. Um, he's he's much happier performing marriages and blessing babies and that kind of thing. So, although he's not a judge, but he's the closest thing the town's got. So, um, and when it comes down to, and this is weird, he's he's not brave and he's not brilliant and he's not a great fighter, but he's a nice guy. And when people have brought him difficult problems when they've got disagreements like oh your pet dinosaur ate my pet dinosaur and i was gonna i was gonna eat my pet dinosaur which is why i was raising it i spent two years raising the stupid thing and then your pet dinosaur ate it and your pet dinosaur isn't good to eat because your yours is a different kind of dinosaur. anyway like that kind of thing he's really good at doing these these judgment of solomon kind of things uh figuring out like a fair resolution that makes everybody equally unhappy he, right. he's actually he's actually really good at that so which is one of the reasons why he keeps re, being re, they have they have elections every two years or what they think are years 
they kind of depend on Sam Winston to tell them when a year begins and ends. <laughs> so, because there's no seasons. <laughs> it's all it's all a compromise. So, anyway, but he keeps getting reelected. So, yay. Um, but you guys are planning your excursion, and you're you're doing. I think mostly listening because they're talking about like places mm-hmm. they've been, places places they haven't been, and they have a very rough sketched out map of the local area within like three or four days walk from here. And they're talking about like this area over here. They haven't nobody's been out to this area since uh, old Bob disappeared out there about what was it, about four years ago. I'd say about four years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what. No, he just never came back. Anyway, so that's like where they're gonna go next. Then someone runs in. <gasps> Uh, and they say, there's been an attack. The Mexican Indians attacked. And they they captured, and he reels off like half a dozen names. Uh, and, and everybody's like, stands up, and there's everyone's talking at once. Oh, it's bread and butter, 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 bread and butter. And uh, I'll go get my rifle, and that kind of thing. Because they don't Find generally... out from the messenger where. What? Find out from the messenger where they attacked. Oh, we were working out in the field. Because the rain let up, and we figured it's a good time to go out and, um, you know, do field hand things that people do. And, and suddenly, out of nowhere, uh, like a, a, a dozen of these Mexican Indians attacked, and we, we fought them off best we could, but they grabbed a bunch of people with nets and dragged them off, and and uh, they were on, they were riding on lizards, like big ones, big lizards. And uh, they had, like, big gold masks on the heads of the lizards and and like saddles on them is crazy and uh but we captured one the, the boys are bringing him in and just as soon as the person who ran and say that uh half dozen cowboys is drag it, in is the first time that the uh, aztecs have attacked oh no it's happened before okay uh it hasn't happened lately not since you've been here and uh so anyway, uh, they, dra- they half dozen guys come in and they're dragging uh, an Aztec <laughs> behind them. We've lost Donald and Karen, so we'll pause for a minute. Oh no! <laughs> well, actually, you're 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 sitting there, Lloyd, and say Michael's sitting there too. Why not? And okay. Uh, Unfortunately, neither one of us speaks not not at all. Uh, neither does anybody else here. <laughs> Uh, it's almost like people show up with their drinks at this point. Give give me long enough, and we'll give three of us, at least two, or if not three of us, long enough, we'll, we'll be able to figure it out. But yeah. Um, well, you were speaking with the. Oh, that's right. I was speaking to that guy. The, the bug guys. Yeah, yeah you, I was you, speak- you worked out the basics of his um, syntax. It's a it's not modern Nahuatl, because because it's not. Um, but you yeah. you picked up the basic syntax of it, like right off the bat, and then some of the vocabulary is different, but you worked out the important things, you, me, we, go, kill, don't kill, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, how to say yes, no, maybe, please. Uh, yeah. So you've worked out most of that stuff. So anyway, they drag the guy in and like slam him down on the table, and they're, they're like, I say we got him. No, no, no. I say we cut off his head. Ah, hanging's too good for him. You know, how about why don't we talk to him and find out what's going actually going on? You've confused them. <laughs> they, they'll just stop and, and look at you. Like, it's like well, they they don't they don't they don't speak American. They don't speak English. He, one guy pokes him in the chest, says, "Hey, hey, boy, you understand English? You understand the words that I am saying to you?" And the guy no, just. No, I know how to talk to them. I don't, there's more than one language, after all, besides English. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Doc, why don't you try and find out what you can from the guy? Yeah. Uh, first, it's, uh, first off, ask him if he's okay. He is flabbergasted that you're speaking to him in the people's language. And he says, uh, how is it that you speak the people's language? What do you uh, say? What do you say? Everybody says. <laughs> he he wants to know how I'm able to talk to him. How are you I, able to talk to him? Huh? 
How are you able to talk to him? I know many languages. And I repeat it in his language. I know many languages. Huh. Okay. Well, if you're uh, going to sacrifice me to your gods, uh, just know that I will endeavor to be a bad sacrifice that will make them unhappy. I wasn't planning on letting them sacrifice you to any gods. We don't generally do that around here anyways. Well, the civilized ones of us don't. <laughs> I say in his language. <laughs> is that what you plan for those you've stolen from us is to sacrifice them? I'll ask them that. Ah, yes, uh, so ask him. So were the ones taken today, uh, or was well, today, right? Yeah, just now. Yeah, uh, the, were the so so was that your intentions with the with the people you've taken from our fields to, to sacrifice them? Well, of course. Ah, that's why we raid you. Okay. Why don't I go and do a little reconnaissance and see if I can figure out where they went? Yes. Uh, yeah, they, they were actually planning to sacrifice them, but there seems to be pro there they probably there's probably a misun for all we know there's a misunderstanding or lack of communication after all does wonders for 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 relationships and i mean that, their own text, right they kill their own people in sacrifice in addition to i'm aware of this yes okay all right just want to yeah. let you know well when we have to but we much prefer again, to right? sacrifice you then again edgelord was planning on sacrificing half a dozen of these villagers to uh the, oh man to the don't, don't make me defend Edgelord. no that was something he was not willing to do that is where that was where he drew the line he was not no, willing to turn that's... over innocent people to be experimented on <laughs> anyway don't right make right me right. defend Edgelord. the guy was a terrible <laughs> terrible person I, I still expect to spread that rumor amongst the people <laughs> oh why it's not bad. Oh, just moving on. Moving on. Yes, Lloyd? I'm going to go out and see if I can find where the Aztecs have gone to. Good idea. Okay. I'd offer to help, but probably somebody who can be, you know, except that Donald could communicate, apparently can communicate with them. Oh, uh, 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 Captain, radios might be a good idea to think about. Yes, radios. Right. I get the pa I get a pack out of the truck. <laughs> Shit, that's right. We had him in the truck. Right. You, yeah, you actually, you actually have radios. You just don't currently have a way to charge them, but he can work on something like that while you're we out have, flying around. We have broadcast. Yeah, if I have to use the steam engine to turn a micro generator to, mm -hmm. just to power you, you up, the have, radio, you have we plentiful have plentiful supply of wire from various places, including the, the junk pile that people bring in from their trips back and forth to Wonkwo. Um, so you, you have plentiful supplies of wire. You probably have electric motors. There's, you come to think of it, you think there was a vacuum cleaner in there somewhere. You like dig in there. Oh, look, there's vacuum cleaner motor. Like, yeah, big. You remember oh, in gosh, Boys Life and, magazine, and, they would make hovercraft out of these. So. And there's parts on the vacuum cleaner. And I'm sure some of those, until we get something built up, I'm sure some of those radios had standard run-of-the-mill batteries. And until we run out of the batteries, we can run them that way. Actually, those those, those, those three those radios probably had rechargeable batteries uh, knowing today's tech but if unless it's been more than like you know three or four weeks since we dug them the, the, oh, since guys guys you're missing you're missing a big punch of this but the diesel runs we have all the power we want we I have a mobile broadcast vehicle with a running diesel engine with one two three I thought you had to bypass the electrics on that thing because they were they were fried. Uh, fried. Uh, did, yeah, no, but a generator, two wires off. And how it's, much it's, fuel he, he can he, Moving forward, yes, it's not an obstacle. He can he can hack yeah. something together. The hard, hardest part is the voltage regulator. Okay. Yeah. He's because because otherwise because otherwise you're just gonna fry the radios. So while he's working on that, yep. John Erlang is gonna fly out. In the charger. <laughs> Chandra is going to fly out to. Um... Oh, you do find out something. Uh, the. This is in the midst of the conversation, Karen. Yeah, by by uh, the way, I assume everything we're using is modern and runs on five and a half volt. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've it's been ages since I I had a rechargeable. Oh, everything's Actually, following mobile. That that's not true because of your phone. Everything has followed the phone technology. It's all USB rechargeable five and a half volt. Oh, that way they no, that that up. makes perfect sense. That uh, yes, that makes that makes perfect sense. So Kiara, something that comes through while you're interrogating the prisoner is uh, mm -hmm. they, of course, don't call themselves Mexican Indians. Of course not. They call themselves the Tanachka. Tanachka. So, uh, which from his point of view basically just means people. Um, mm. But Tanachka is like what they the Like the Nachka lines in, um, Mex in, in Central America? Wouldn't know. <laughs> you wouldn't know, anyway. Actually, no, you guys are cryptid hunters. You can draw yeah. whatever con crazy conclusions you want, then. <laughs> so, as far as this guy is concerned, his people are called the Tanachka. And the city of his people is called... Where did I put that map? And I'll tell you this, that way I can refer to it later. Uh, Chickamaustoc is the name of the city. So... Yay! <laughs> oh, anybody who's actually studied Aztecs knows that the words that Aztecs used for themselves were either Tanachka or Mexica. Um, Mexica is where we get Mexico and so forth. So, uh, okay, so Tanachka, that's important. Because I'm going to start calling them that now, and now you, you know what they mean. Uh, John Erling flies out. Da -da -da -da. They're making pretty good time because they are on the backs of dinosaurs. There's a Brontosaurus, and there's two Tyrannosaurus Rexes. And another thing that's similar to a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but it's got more of like an alligator type head. And they are completely made up. They've got like gold leaf, probably. If, if it were actual gold, it'd be crazy heavy. So it's probably not solid gold. It's probably carved wood or something that's got gold leaf applied to it. But they've got like masks over the heads and of the dinosaurs with you know eye holes and stuff which have reins and there's uh saddles type things and then like platforms behind the saddles to which prisoners are at the moment are strapped along with supplies bundles of fruit and bundles of uh other foodstuffs and sacks of water uh they this is an expedition so and there's the the guy who's, who ran in said there was a dozen of them. You actually only see like a half dozen of them on these on these dinosaurs. Okay. So all of the prisoners are being held basically on a like a howda, a platform on the back of a brontosaurus? Well, they're all they're spread among the dinosaurs but but yeah, oh. that's basically they're, basically they're strapped back there with the uh, supplies. They're not dead. They seem to be awake actually. But they're, you know, tied up and restrained and and gagged because we don't want to hear your monkey talk how far have they how far have they gotten so far um a couple of miles not far because ah. they this literally just happened well actually how long have you been Karen how long do you suppose this interrogation took probably not too long you know half 15 hour, hour half hour tops yeah, unless the guy's not, unless the guy seems to be relatively willing to communicate with me, so I'm not going to take that long. Yeah, plus them bringing him in and here, getting it, uh, call it an hour since the people got snatched. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. Okay, so like five miles. So they're oh, making good yeah. time. Yeah. Um, they, um, yeah, they're making good time. Just tell, if, if we have our radios yet, uh, I, I would be able to, if not, he can. <laughs> I'll, I'll fly back and say they're about five miles that way. Oh, okay. I can carry two people. I can carry uh, <coughs> um. I might be able to carry one person, especially if they can. I can, I can, I can grab a bot and ride him, but he'll, he'll be useless after that. I take it we want to rescue the hostages? Because I, yeah. I was planning on doing that. Either. That's my plan. Okay. Yeah. 
But I think these people need to be taught manners. Mm, absolutely. Okay, well, um, Doc and Captain, apparently you two can make your way out there as quickly as you can. Um, I'll grab Michael and I'll fly out. Yes. Wow. You know, flying, that's, that's wound up being a problem. <laughs> and, and being able to run at the same speed he can fly, so. <laughs> well, the running's not so bad, but the flying is definitely a problem. <laughs> not something I was prepared for. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so. Uh, well, I mean, you, you remember my, my left of center campaign that I, was, that I kept running the multi-genre campaign? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it until the last campaign that I ran with a couple of guys up here, but yeah, nobody that I had ever run before actually had any kind of long range flight capability, except for this one guy that I ran. There were, there were just two guys running. One was a psychic and the other was a basically a mad scientist inventor. And um, yeah, once he invented a hovercraft that could, or like a hover car that could actually fly long distances very quickly, I just started thinking, about, thinking up shit really fast. <laughs> Because he would leave behind all of the stuff that I was planning. There's all this cool stuff on the ground. There's the, the ground's where the game is. <laughs> just going to skip over everything. It's like, you know, Wizard of Oz tells Dorothy to go, you know, kill the Wicked Witch. And she's like, okay. And she flies there. <laughs> Skips past the entire movie. Just flies there. It gets there in about half. It gets there in like 50. Minutes or, or half an hour, because depending on her. her the monkeys life. aren't even home; they're out somewhere else looking for them. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no woodsman, no lion. Well, if she can nope, fly. Skip she all that stuff. She just flies, flies straight yeah. there. Yeah. Uses her heat vision. Psh, burns the witch. Anyway. Oh man, that would mean no, no TikTok. Because without ten woodsmen, there would be no TikTok. So Michael uh, <laughs> carried aloft, carried aloft with like John Erlang. Um, they are making t good time, but they have gone from the deserty clay area where tranquility is into right. jungle. And so you can kind of see them. Actually, I'll make you roll. Make a roll. <laughs> what am I rolling for? Reason. Oh, you've got like sight beyond sight with the whole. All right. Hyperacuity. Yeah, yeah, yes. no, no. So, uh, reason plus power level plus 2d6. He's rolling in the No, he is. He is because he's got the crazy senses. 17. Oh, I got to roll against you. Duh. Oh, I see uh, Craig is on the road again. Yep. Hey, there he yeah, is. Hey, Craig. This is an unexpected one. So, well, sort of unexpected. Last minute. Oof. You all settled in, Craig? Eh, not really. I'll probably run around settling in as 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 I listen in. Okay. Uh, did you hear that um, half a dozen townsfolk have been captured by the Tnachka? Yep. All right, cool. Anyway, yeah, you, you spot them. Uh, Captain, I mean, uh, John Erling spots the, the glint of the gold leaf. It's hard to so, hide. Does all this happen before we had a chance to follow up with the uh, the hag? Yeah. yeah, it's been raining really heavy for several days, so everybody's kind of like hunkered down, waited that out. <laughs> okay. So I I figure we loop around in front of them and just like you know block their path until they talk nice. That was my intention. Yes. Let me see if anybody notices you. I'll just roll one time, but I'll give him a bonus die. Let's see. How hard would it be to see? I give them a wide berth. I'm a sailing man. I know how to tack wide. <laughs> um, John Erlang. Yeah. You're the one doing the flying. Yep. Uh, are you trying not to be seen? Not particularly. All right. Roll 2d6, add three. OK. They all know I'm here soon enough. Uh, nine. They I notice you. Imagine. Wow. I can't right. imagine John Erlang not wanting to be seen. How not to be seen? Let's see. If I see something up Or I should there, say Erlang yeah. Shen. John was yeah, I was going to say, John Erlang might not want to be seen. He's got stealth, but Erlang Shen, yeah, doesn't care. Yeah, Erlang <laughs> Shen. When, once, once the armor happens, you just step back because he's going to be the well, remember, I don't have armor. 
No, so he's like, the only one who does. I believe I can put spikes on armor. There's only one person here who has armor right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, Erlang is being attacked. You get to make an agility, ranged combat agility. If you have modification resistance, you can add your power level to that roll. Modification resistance? Yes. I don't know what that is, so I'll assume I don't have it. I roll double fives, and to that I add my agility and my power level. Brandon, is that like modification resistance? Is that like armor or oh, it's damage um in in or... Lloyd in champions would be power defense, but oh, it's okay. the it's the defense against Dark things arc. that would change your body in some way. So if somebody's it. trying to transform you into a rat. That's what would help you defend against that. If somebody okay. is, oh, as okay. in this case, trying to blind you, what do you what do you get total, Lloyd? Thirteen. Okay. If somebody's trying to blind you, as they are here, uh, that is the defense that you get. Let's see. Um, so, you got 13. I got 2. To recover from a bit of a... Okay. Um, there is a blinding light, and uh, you are... Uh, Erlang can't see. He's like just sees like like flash bulbs going off in front of his in front of his eyes. Okay. Um, I'll let Michael know that I've got that I've been blinded. Where do you want to go? I'll try and direct you, but I don't know how well I can do that. Just tell me to stop right before we hit the ground, and I'll fly right. down. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> a little more. A little more. <laughs> okay, you can slow down. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, that's good. Slow down a little bit. So yeah, I'll, I'll land. <laughs> Going through trees, and then you land. Um, and I'll let Michael do his thing from this point. Uh, All right. How much are you willing to have somebody uh, get into your head if I can help see your eyes? Oh, uh, don't worry about me for the moment. Um, I'm, I, as long if they once they get close enough, I, it's not a problem. I can fight without using my eyes. Uh, all right. So do do your thing. See if you can take these guys down. You blind don't, don't you? Just, cool or, thing, you or, just, or, just re blind. remind the Tyrannosaurus Rexes that they eat Brontosauruses. <laughs> <laughs> blind fighting. I've, do you have blind fighting? I do. That's not that's not that. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, so, what are you doing, Michael? All right. How close are we to these people? Because it's going to depend on how close we are. Uh, quarter mile. Can I see one of? The, can I see the Tyrannosaurus? No, 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 no. They're way too far away for that. Okay. I. And you have jungle between powers, you and them as well. Well, the thing is, I for much of my powers, I need to see what I'm going after. I think. All right, well, it was closer. Yeah. With, with, that, with that radio message, I think we ought to all uh, hurry ourselves up to the uh, uh, to blocking their path. So we are moving. I, I'm moving uh, my blind friend and myself a little bit closer. Yeah, yeah. You guys come in and flank up. We'll uh, just step in front of the block the path kind of thing. Well, be careful. We can cast spells to make you blind. So, Dr. Anna and Captain Harrows and Isco, are you guys heading out there? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were, we were all moving around to uh, to try and get a uh, loop around and cut him off at the pass, and then somebody got himself blinded. Mm -hmm. All right, who's doing the navigation for you guys' as a group? Me. Okay, roll 2d6 plus your survival, um, which would be a uh, right reason. Hmm? Pro from Dover Navigation. That means you're better than anybody else mm -hmm. here. Um, I think, wait, do you get a bonus die for that? Hang on. Let me, let me double check. Yeah, 
know, that's that's normally um, when you're it's essentially like knowledge, okay? It's not actually like combat or doing things. It's when you're answering a question or doing research, you get a bonus die. Okay. Well, I rolled a five and a three, so that's it's academic, is what I'm saying. A five and a three plus my reason of three is an eleven. Okay. Okay, you're not lost, <laughs> but you're not exactly sure where you are in relation to John Erlang and Michael. Okay. You, I mean, you know that they are to your either east or west, depending on which side you're going. I mean, you pick. Uh, you know that they're on the side that they're on that side, but you're not sure how far either ahead or behind them you are. Okay, so I guess what we should do is head to the nearest part of the path in front of those guys. There's no path. They're going through the woods, the, the jungle. Oh, well, wherever they're in the direction that they're headed, now's the time to step out in front of them. Oh, you're, you're going to move to try to intersect where you hope they are. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, so if you if, if you got the radio message, you know that one of them's got power. I think. We duly noted. Uh, meanwhile, Michael and Erlang, what are you guys doing? We're moving towards them uh, so I can get a good look. <laughs> the, I'm following Michael. The Tanashka. Uh, about I'm this time, the blindness that. clears up. Oh. Okay. Good. It's something you can roll against to, to, to get out of it, but if essentially the scene changes, it just goes away. So okay. we're going to say this, this has been long enough the scene changes, so it just goes away. So hang on, I'm refilling the train. Let's see. Uh, either Michael or Erlang. Do you guys have tactics? Anybody? Oh, well, actually, no, it's survival. You survival? Yes. All right, make a reason survival roll, John Erlang. Nine. Oh, you can roll two. And it's two dice if you have the skill, right? That is correct. And the skill is survival. You don't roll unless you're an expert in it. And it's reason? Hmm. What's it on? Reason? Yes. Okay. Uh, my total is uh, 10. Oh, wow. All right. You both, as you're moving forward, realize they know you're here. There's a very good chance you're walking into an ambush. <laughs> okay. if, if the positions were reversed, you would mm -hmm. be setting up an ambush. Okay. Now, can I... Do I know where we... If we know this, can we can I figure out a way to go that isn't directly to where I think they are, that, like maybe skirt around them? You can try. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. And since I'm the one leading, I guess Erlang's still blind, or did he? No, he, he shook it off. Okay, I think we better go this way. Yeah, they're probably gonna ambush us here. I yeah, we don't want to go straight. We want to go. I think we want to go around. We want to skirt wide. Okay, that's a good idea. Why don't you do that? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Turn straight down the middle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am making it my job to be as obvious as possible. I want, all really eyes on, I want all eyes on me. Well, so much for the diplomatic route. Meanwhile. Yeah, I can pull it again. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Captain Harrows, you're doing the navigation for your group? Assuming mm -hmm. your group wants to stick together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, though you could split up. I'm sure nothing bad would happen then. <laughs> um, no, I think the ground crew should stick together. Okay, uh, make another a tracking or, yeah, call it tracking or navigation. Mm -hmm. Pay a potato. Um, survival roll. 
Uh, only a ten this time. Okay. You cross the path where clearly three or four dinosaurs marching more or less next to each other have gone through the jungle. So this leaves a very clear path. So you know that those have to be to your right or to your... Wait, which which side would it be? Pick pick one that way. I, my description will be consistent. Uh, let's go with to the right. Let's go okay, with... Okay, so you, you were cutting to the east and now you have cut back west to cross the road. So to the right is... You know there are dinosaurs that way with Aztecs on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe... Erlang and Michael are to your left, or maybe they are to your right. So, but you know the dinosaurs are to the right. I head toward the dinosaurs. Okay. Right. Charging through the fort, the jungle. Oh, yes. like- See, I, kn- I know, I know Erlang Shan, and if I want to find Erlang Shan, find the biggest noise in the area. Okay. <laughs> As you charge forward, Erlang Shan, you see a guy, an Aztec, on the path ahead of you. He appears to be injured, and he's got a spear, and he's like crouched on one leg, but his other leg appears to be. Uh, bloody or something. Uh, they He appears to have been left behind, but he's got an, a spear aimed at you, and he says something very aggressive, but you're not sure what it means. Uh, context would say it's something along the line of, stand back or I'll stab you with my spear. But he's not injured. I'm sure he's part of the uh, Brennan, can I go ahead and do a move by or some sort of equivalent action to, on this guy? Uh, sure. You can attack before, during, or after you move. Okay. Basically, I'll just run past him and clothesline him as I go. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> you can roll to hit him. Yeah, he was. That's just not going to happen. All right. Okay, that's what I'll do. Oh, that all works out. Yeah. Roll, roll some dice and tell me what you get. Okay. Uh, what is this, close combat? Close combat. Okay. I got um, 13. Six game. Damn. All right. Zoom past him in with uh, Lady Ashwand. No, I was just gonna uh, clip him. I, well, I wasn't using my power. Okay. I'm not martial arts, so. Oh, fine. Uh, you run past and nail him, and he puts up his spear, and he misses the block with the spear. But when you hit him, there is like a kind of a glowing in the air, and like a shung as you hit. Hmm. Uh, it still knocks him backward and and he like tumbles backward a bit and let's see that would be two sounds like they all have some magic of some sort yeah he's got some kind of um glowing force field essentially magical shield however right then you get to make and since you clearly weren't expecting this they get a bonus die (laughs) because it's a surprise because it's an ambush yay well, I was expecting an ambush. I'm just not sure what they're doing ambush-wise. Oh. Oh, okay. You were expecting to get attacked when you came up to this guy? If, if so, yes. I mean, by somebody else? If so, I'll, I'll take away the bonus die. I'm assuming that's why he kept, wanted to keep running through. Yeah, I was basically... I was setting off the ambush, so it wouldn't affect anybody. Fair else. enough. They don't get the bonus die. Um, okay. Two nets and a beam of red light come out of the jungle at you. So you get to make three ranged combat defense rolls against that. Okay. And... Let me know if I can ever see what's happening from some place else. Well, though. no, you'll, you're, yours, yours will come after this. Yeah. This would be what? Close combat? Plus... Range, range, range combat. Range combat. All right. <laughs> uh, agility 
and you've got the armor, right? So agility plus power level plus 2d6. I got a 12, 14, 14. 15. Hmm? 14. Okay. Two more times. On the first one. One of the nets Ooh. misses you. Hmm. 19 on the second one. Damn. How the hell do you... Wait, 12, so... Roll 11 on the dice. Yeah, I guess that's... All right, all right. All right, one more. My highest roll. I got a 15 on this one. 11 on the third Woo! one. I rolled Woo! three. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so 11, 12, 13, 14. Two points of brawn go away. Okay. The red, the red beam of light, which is the third one, which is actually mm -hmm. the one I was hoping would hit. So that worked out well for me. Um, red beam of light hits you, and you feel overcome with weakness. And uh, you lose two brawn. Probably way more powerful than they are. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, hmm. Meanwhile, Michael, you clearly you're not exactly sure where, because you're like looping around. So you weren't exactly sure where John Erlang was, because he's zooming along, and he's, he's actually you continues. Remember, he's he continues zooming. Hang on, <laughs> what? What? Yeah, say say it again. Ahead. One more time, Leslie. I can't hear you. I said, it sounds like he's making a lot of noise. I shouldn't be able, I shouldn't miss him. <coughs> right. Once that happens, you're sure where he is. And plus, you see, like, a red flash through the leaves. However, John Erling gets, you continue your movement. Where do you end up? Actually, I'll, I'll start heading in the direction of wherever that, that beam of red light came from. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> that person needs to be taught a lesson. <laughs> right then. Um, well, yeah, that's easy. You, you basically run through the jungle and up to a an Aztec, and his outfit is a lot more elaborate than the guy who's pretending to be injured on the road. Um, so that's that's fun. <laughs> you basically run up to him within like close combat range, or what? Yes. Well, that's that's just that's just not great. Anyway, yeah, he's very elaborately dressed. He's holding aloft a, a carved, intricately carved gold disc about this this bit about the size of a saucer, with all kinds of like weird little Aztec symbols and like a face in the middle and patterns of snakes and jaguars and stuff like that. Yeah. Michael, what you doing? Do I see them yet? You you have a vague idea where they are, yeah. You can you can you can get there. I need to find I need to see one of them. <laughs> or the vicinity anyway. Alright. Um do you have survival? You do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two D six, reason and I'll tell you if you get close. Oh, I rolled pretty well. I rolled crap. So you jog through the woods and through a clearing you see John Erlang, and you see a very elaborately dressed Aztec fella. Ah, I think my attack's going to be against that very elaborately dressed Aztec. All um, right. Let's see. I'm going to just use a telekinesis, because I don't know if he's their, a priest, I don't know if he's a magic user, I know somebody was throwing magic, so I'm just going to go brute force with the telekinesis, throw him against the tree. Wow, okay. You've been hanging around me too long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me go well, find my... I gotta break my... his concentration if he is the magic user. Let me find my t telekinesis rules, because there's a rule for this. Because that's kind of a thing that people with telekinesis wind up doing. Telekinesis. Your intention is to, like, throw him against a tree or something? Yeah. You know, you okay. can't force and just push him against a tree. It is your... Perfect. Your... Range combat, agility plus power level. Okay. And he combat. rolls against Ooh. that. Range combat, that's the expertise. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I got 15, what do you got? I'm still adding. Um, let's see. Range combat, you said, plus agility. Plus agility plus power, power level. level. Okay, what dice is that? I'll fix it up to 14. Now let me go find my 
agility. Uh, 17. Damn it. All right. You mm, grab the Aztec priest guy. Because that's what he is. He's a priest. Yeah, he's uh, a priest. And you want to throw him against a tree? So well, this is... Something, uh, something, something that I will, you know, make him lose his concentration more than anything. But I'd like to hurt him, too. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. You make another ranged combat agility plus power level roll. So basically the same thing again. And we see how badly you hurt him. Oh, man. Uh, it's going to be very bad. Um, a total of 19 that time. Splurt. I'm okay. <laughs> you, you pick him up, and there is like a some kind of ancient prehistoric tree there, like a palm tree that the the base of it is the size of a giant sequoia, and you boom, 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 and uh, just knock the guy out. He's gonna sacrifice people in my village. I don't like that very much. Yeah, that was... Did I tell you that I expected this trip to come rescue these guys for, to take you guys three or four days? Did I tell you that? <laughs> Not so much. No. Brandon, Flying. 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 Box. We never think inside the You should know that by now. Because two of you have super speed, and uh, it's just. All right. I'm just I'm trying to... to get her picture on the camera. She keeps hey, looking you... in that direction. All right. So, the, uh, that priest is down. Yay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Craig and Captain Harrows and Dr. Anna, you are jogging or strolling or moving cautiously up the trail and it you can say whichever it is but it doesn't really matter because you see the flash of red light ahead of you and you hear the sounds of combat so left or right let's go what you doing so i'm invisible like i normally would be in this circumstance and i approach to see what's going on uh there's you see three aztecs essentially running from one side of this it's not a trail it is a area maybe 20 feet wide that has been trampled flat by dinosaurs so it looks like a trail <laughs> but it's a anyway from the jungle on one side of the trail to the other side of the trail aztecs run 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 there's three what i like they're running away from something either away or toward they they all three of them seem determined mm -hmm. to get wherever they're going. Follow them. Okay. Uh, Captain Harrows. Donald, you around? He's we'll over here. Kieran. No, yes. well, he'll, he'll, he'll be back. Right. Dr. Anna. Yes. Um, uh, you, you see the flash of light up ahead. You hear red light. You hear the sounds of combat. Yes. Yes, I was getting a drink. It's okay. We'll we'll come back to you, Donald. Let let Karen do her thing. Okay. Cool. What you doing? That'll give me get back to my room. Anyways, uh, so uh, yeah, catch up, which shouldn't be an issue considering, and um, you yeah, move like a blur and run like the huntress down the trail, and you, well, you don't know it, but Isco, you whoo, pass Isco, and his hair goes, whoo, and yeah, there were. <laughs> Uh, as you get there, one Aztec has just run across the trail from your left to your your right. And then right after that, another one runs out. And through the jungle, you can see a couple more. And they're running in your direction, but not toward you specifically. They're dressed very elaborately. There's, like, lots of gold and lots of feathers. And there's some, like, blue and black and red face paint and body paint. They They, they look very fancy. Hmm. Well, if they're looking for a fight, I'll fight them. Well, they're not running but... toward you specifically. They are running from your left to your right across the uh, smashed flat path that the dinosaurs made. Oh! Uh, also, from where you are standing, Dr. Anna, you do not see mm -hmm. dinosaurs. You do ah. see the path ahead of you kind of ends abruptly, but you don't see dinosaurs. Ah. Uh, are they going towards where the red light came from? Sure. Let's say that you know that without a roll. Sure. Okay. 
So, um, I want to try to catch up with whatever. Uh, I'm not going to attack these guys unless they're going to attack me. But if they're going to attack me, I'm, I'm going to take them out. Okay, Is Isco, you don't have super speed or anything, super running or anything like that, right? No, regular. Okay, so it took you your whole action to get that far. Dr. Anna, you can attack one of these guys running by if you want. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Or you can continue uh, running into the woods and look for um, I'm gonna keep running John Erlang and, and Michael. Yeah, I'm going I'm to keep running and, keep, and try to catch up. Make it a full move. All right, uh, you run through the jungle. Oh, man, I hate that song. Um, <laughs> and you kind of you get ahead of them, and you jog back and forth a bit, and eventually you find where John Erlang is standing there, and the uh, uh, a piece of ground because somebody took away his bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he's he, he's looking menacing, but you don't see who he's menacing at. Um, but off to one side, pushed up against a tree and kind of unconscious is uh, an extremely ornate Aztec, even more ornate than the other guys Aztec, who's hanging there unconscious and slightly mm. flatter <laughs> slightly flattened is that what you said? slightly flatter than normal, yes <laughs> he yeah. gets pushed up against a tree so that's what Dr. Anna sees you can do like a role play action if you want and then we'll move on to Camaros. I miss all the fun stuff <laughs> oh, there's more Aztecs. Oh, there's more bad guys. There are more of them back there, though. Don't worry. Oh, there's lots of bad guys. I know. There's at least a Tyrannosaurus Rex, so you got a dinosaur, too. Yeah, yeah, a Huntress thing. Yeah, there's like four dinosaurs that you can look up on. Oh, I mean, oh. the dangerous ones are the, the carnivores. Well, oh, then. We're in the right direction. I will go for those, then. Take down the big things. Okay, um... I'm going to try and grab one of these fleeing people if I see fleeing people. Yeah, see, the thing is, if I grab them, they'd probably be dead. If I smack, if I was to hit one of them. So I'm going well, to... You chose you to use your power. Yeah, I know, but there's dinosaurs, apparently, so I'm going after yeah. those. Car carrying people, even. Okay. I can't argue with that. Because these dinosaurs. Yeah. No, basically, basically, I want to, like, trip, like, the last guy running away, I want to do a sliding tackle tr uh, FIFA style, lay him on the ground trip, and then tell him in his language. Now, y'all just aren't very polite. <laughs> First time they've ever heard right. that third their language said it with a southern twang. <laughs> All right, so Captain Harrow's rolls a close combat attack against the last Aztec running through the clearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you roll four. close combat, he rolls close combat, you tell me what you get. Okay. I got a 12. 14. Damn it. You guys are rolling really well. <laughs> These are not pushovers. I mean, they're not as badass as you are, but still, no, they're not that, that, was, that was a six and a five from me. Um, hey, okay, oof, he hits the ground. And um, I tell them, you folks aren't very polite. That's my problem. Uh, he looks up at you and says, uh, your heart will please Tanakhtlan the Feathered Serpent, or that's a Quadalicus or anyway he, he names an Aztec god and he says uh, your heart will please that's a Quadalicus oh hang on if I'm going to do this I should probably look up Aztec gods hang on a second uh, well, oh, which, whichever one it is I tell him I think I killed one of those a few years back ooh here you go Tezcatlipoca Tezcatlipoca will feast on your heart he says oh that sounds much better I like that much better I, I, say, I, I tell him I think I caught and stuffed one of those last year Okay. <laughs> Ooh, Tezcatlipoca, god of night. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, often yeah. represented as an evil power associated with death and cold. Awesome. Much better than Quetzalcoatl, for mm -hmm. my purposes. Okay. 
Yes. Um, and he lunges at you. Well, he he stands up and lunges at you. So, you make a close combat defensive roll and tell me what you get. He pulls out a like Box an obsidian. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, he misses. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's your your total? Do you have armor? Yeah. No. Box Ooh. cars and a three. Damn it. He had ten because he rolled he rolled kind of badly. Um, so he he so he literally misses you. He lunges forward with his napped uh, obsidian knife, which kind of glows blue as it goes through the air, at least like a like an afterimage of blue glow through the air as he stabs at you, but he misses you. The, I shove Megatron in his face and say, now just calm down. Well, it's not your turn again yet. All right, okay. so who has <laughs> not attacked who can? I think everybody has. So who's left over? Oh, two Aztecs hmm. who catch up to Dr. Anna. And uh, let's say one attacks Dr. Anna and one attacks Erlang Shen. So this is close combat for you to roll defense against two Aztecs who each have uh, napped uh, chipped obsidian knives with uh, little Aztec symbols carved on them. And uh, as they move through the air, they leave a, they leave a blue afterimage. And I roll suck on both of those. So unless you roll just astonishingly bad, they both miss you. I, I, I actually did roll pretty bad. I rolled a 10. <sighs> Oh my god, I hit you. <laughs> wait, wait. It's only because only you drained my brawn. Dr. Anna, what do you got? Oh, keep going after dinosaurs! No, 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 you have to roll a close <laughs> combat <laughs> roll to keep from yeah, the no. Oh Yeah, yeah no someone's attacking you before you can get to the dinosaurs. Yeah, it's two, oh, well, 2d6 two okay. plus your... Do you have armor? No. 2d6 plus your brawn. Alright, 2d6 plus my brawn, no problem. Alright, uh... 10. Missed you by one. He rolled really, <laughs> really badly. It's He literally rolled one more than minimum. <laughs> and missed wow. you by one. Okay, Go so... Three. One guy, yeah, two and a one. Uh, one guy lunges forward and actually stabs Erlang Shen, doing one point of endurance damage. It's not a very deep cut, but it's a cut. Uh, <clears> the <throat> other one swipes at Dr. Anna, and she steps back, and it whoosh, just switches oh. through the air. Shall we dance? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Left to right. Isco, what you doing? You can run up to oh. anybody you want to fight and fight them. Yep, you're first that, rules that question. Um, you're talking about armor. Do you mean is that damage resistance you're talking about? Yes, yes, it is. Oh, okay. Um, or, or actual physical armor. If you had that too, that'd work too. But for you guys, it's probably damage resistance or force field. Right, okay. Um, I think you're talking, you're talking in general, any kind of. Yeah, I, I was speaking but... generically. Got it, got it. Okay, so uh, still invisible. I'm going to shape shift into one of, like, a generic one of these guys, the way they're dressed and all that. And I'm going to try to continue on to where that, where that, wherever that red bolt came from. It, it literally came from about two feet in front of where Erling Shen is standing. The guy who is smashed against the tree. I mean, this is out of character. You don't necessarily know this in character, but you can kind of infer it. Um, yeah. That's where Erling Shen and Dr. Anna are at this moment. Oh, OK. okay, okay. I, I, for some reason, I thought we were still a ways away or something. Uh, OK, so I'm going to try to find the place where I can do the most mischief. Uh, get behind somebody, you know, as one of them and, and take somebody out. Well, there are two people, uh, two Aztecs that you see attacking <clears throat> Erling Shen and Dr. Rana who are up and about and appear intent on doing harm. And both of them are facing the same direction, which is toward yeah. Erling Shen and Dr. Rana. So that would be a convenient right. place for you to cause harm. Mischief, right? That'll, that's what I'll do. Okay. You move up behind one of them. You yep. turn drop, visible. Drop. Right. Well, turn turn visible, but I'll be I'll be shaped as one of them. And then okay. I'm gonna so peripheral vision. Per, in their peripheral vision, 
they just assume you're another one of them is what you're saying right. exactly hopefully hopefully you're playing in the and michael don't I'll, I'll like wink at them I'll like wink at them from behind and take a smack at <laughs> And then you're killed by Erling Shin. Oh. I'm winking at him. Wink. <laughs> no, I think one of these Aztecs is trying to pick me up. <laughs> okay, close. Oh, wait, wait. Are you attacking? Yeah. All right, close combat roll. And a, how many threes can I roll in one night? <laughs> this many. Oh, at least they're not ones. <laughs> I got a total of nine. Do you, can you possibly roll less than nine? Well, it's possible. I mean, I've got close combat with expertise, and that's with with brawn. So it's not possible. No, it's not. No. Three, three, he, can, he can match it. Three, three, and three. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I, minimum I could minimum that's minimum I, minimum I could do would be exactly nine. So we got twelve. So a poor roll. Okay. <laughs> that was decent four to fives. Well, you, you, it's your flaming sword? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the One of the Aztecs that ran up behind the first two Aztecs uh, pulls out a flaming sword and <laughs> cleaves across the back of one of the two, the Aztec that attacked Erlang Shen, let's say. Sure. And, <laughs> and as it swings across, it hits resistance in the air. There's like a, like a glowing, like, <laughs> flicker as it mm. as it goes across the guy's back. But you you definitely cut and leave a burn gash uh, across his back. Hmm? Well that's interesting. I say in my normal voice, so hopefully if the wink didn't do it and the flaming sword didn't do it. And the coming and then becoming visible didn't do it. I, I, I <laughs> no. think the flaming sword is the big clue here. Okay, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Next go, Captain Harrows. You were mm -hmm. you tripped the guy. He attempted to stab you and he missed. Mm -hmm. Um. Basically, I, I I go ahead and throw his arm in a lock with Megatron formation jabbed up under his chin, and I tell him just relax or this ends very badly. And so pretty much, to... if he does anything but relax, I pull the trigger and blow his head off. So you're trying to <laughs> grapple grapple him. Well, uh, uh, the the wrap and the arm around is just so that I can feel if he yanks or relaxes. Well, I'm I need not to translate. I need to translate translate this into something you can roll dice for. So, uh, are you are you actually trying to grapple him, or is that just all a don't move or I'll shoot you, and everything else is just kind of like yeah, for show? It, it, it's a relax or I'll shoot you. And oh, he's he not going to relax, so he's definitely going to try to attack you. So that's oh, not okay. even really so in that question. case. I'll, he makes the first move to attack, and I blow his full head off. Well, there you go. Then all right, uh, ranged combat, and he rolls a decent roll for a change. Yay! Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Damn it! Whoops. You hit him exactly. <laughs> one, one less, and you wait. wait are, there any, are there any bonuses for uh, point blank range? No, no. Okay. Um, so <laughs> he he is clearly going to try to stab you again, and your Megatron robot blasts him in the face with plasma. <laughs> yeah. Ah! yeah. And it kind of splashes a little bit off of uh, some kind of invisible golden aura. But but it definitely like leaves a burnt mark across your shoulder. I told you, Doctor Anna. Well, there's you're a faced guy off against in... some guy. Yeah. Oh, he dared take. He, uh, he, he wants to play with me. Okay. He Pull out my missed sword. You, a... As it happens. He but, missed okay. me. Yeah. He wants to play. <laughs> with me. I pull out my sword and take a swing at him. I have close combat. <laughs> Alright then. And uh, I rolled a 10. Wait, plus your power if you're using strike. Oh, yeah. Ten, that's right. Uh, 13. Uh, close combat is brawn plus your power level for you. Oh, sorry. 13. Uh, 
Well, I rolled a total of eight because I rolled two <laughs> ones. So, oh, so I made it to the bottom of my Nine, power. ten, eleven, twelve. Would you total? Which total? Thirteen. Okay. So five, two five. points on him. All right. Uh, you cut a gash across him that is very clearly serious. Let's go, Michael. The 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 priest you are holding at the moment is clearly unconscious and is going to stay that way. We're probably dropping. But I mean, how many targets are left? How many what? How many targets? Uh, that you can see clearly from where you are, two. One okay. is faced off against Erling Shen. Another is faced off against Dr. Anna. Okay. Um, I don't remember what some of these powers do. Um, <laughs> the mind hold. I, I think it's easier. That's something that their shield probably can't protect them against. So, um, actually, yeah, mind hold. <laughs> Smart move. What? Smart move. On the move. one that's on Erling Shen. On the one that's on Erling Shen. Okay, you make mental combat presence plus power level, and I make mental combat presence. I rolled really well. It won't be good enough, but it, it's I rolled really well. Fifteen. <laughs> yes, nowhere near. Okay, the one facing Erlang Shen, he's like, he's like doing this, and then. He's like, it's like a freeze frame. It's like he doesn't even blink. He's like, so there's that. Like, okay, a couple of times. <laughs> no, he's he's he is well and truly frozen. Well, good. At least we can take one alive. <laughs> Erling Shen. Okay, so everybody's ganging up on the one poor little bastard that's standing in front of me, right? It's kind of looking that way. Great, which way did the dinosaurs go? I'll go attack them. <laughs> All right, well, if you go back out to the path and turn to your right, you see that it goes down like another 100 yards or so and then ends abruptly. Okay. I'll summon You're... a cloud, jump on the cloud, fly out there. You fly down there, and you see that the path has kind of like gone straight ahead, and then they have cut back around like this, like at an angle. Oh. So the dinosaurs are parked over here. Okay. And as you get there, somebody is waiting for someone to come up to them and do exactly what you're doing. So, you ah. can make a ranged combat. I would pick the thing that I, the other guy did not drain, because that's that's how my luck is going. But ranged combat versus this. And uh, okay. we'll see how... Oh, I rolled pretty well! I got a 16. I only got a 10. Oh my gosh, really? Total? Okay, 10, 11, yeah, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Brown only one, so yeah. Three. I just want to prove that there is a black cat right here. Okay. <laughs> I, no, I, hate, I didn't kill him. How many, how many endurance do you have left, Floyd? Endurance? Three. Yeah. You lose all three. <laughs> you bastard. He rolled really well, and you rolled badly. He um, yeah, On the back of the Spinosaurus <laughs> um, is another priest, and he holds aloft a symbol, a, a gold disc, and a beam of... It's another beam of red light, but it's like white-hot red. Red, hot, white, oh, and whatever. God, you know what I mean. God, anyway, the one that's <laughs> like a laser, and it hits you <laughs> dead on, and... <laughs> and... Uh, just you're out and does out of sight uh, what? does regeneration help against attributes oh, I don't remember good, uh, no that's a good question let me check <laughs> one would think uh, let's see uh, da -da -da -da. Regeneration, half the endurance, after you have chance for okay. Uh, um, no, at least not as written. Oh, okay. Should it? <laughs> I'm 
thinking. You are, you are probably it's a, it's a dream, so I would say probably not. Lloyd, and you're the one that's so easily knocked out. <laughs> well, see, the, this is the same thing they give me shit about in my D&D game. That uh, my character is the one who dies the most often because I've I've actually <laughs> like died twice. It's because I'm the one in the front. <laughs> and somebody's going to be the tank. This is the one that's got the godlike powers, but he keeps getting knocked out. Yeah. Well, I also <laughs> tend to be the one who stands there letting, letting people attack me. Yeah. Well, the the yeah. the the brawn the brawn you lost will come back at the end of the scene. So. It, regeneration doesn't really come into play because if if it did, the bronze already back, so it doesn't okay. really matter for that. So All right, no, it's it's not there. permanent. It's just when the combat is over, it comes back. So anyway, Erling Shen face plants. Yay! So okay, so that priest went and was actually effective. I am astonished. <laughs> you have a frozen Aztec warrior, elite. Uh, who who is frozen? He's going to roll to try to break out of the mind hold. So that's what he will do now. Let's see. The first roll is his. It's like, oh, do you want to roll for the for the mind hold, uh, Leslie? Just roll two d six and add three. What's that? Just roll two d six and add three. And I'm this guy's rolling against that. What am I doing? I'm three d six and add three. Two d six and add three. What you are doing is... What? But not my power, right? No, no. Not it's... my power, no, okay. No. Okay, um... I rolled a total with three... Eleven. Yeah, eleven. Hmm. Alright, he's still frozen. Because <laughs> <laughs> his presence is only two. See, so he rolled a seven... At two is nine. He's still frozen. The other one attempts to stab. Wait, my priest is down. My buddy's frozen. Somebody just stabbed me in the back, and that guy's dressed just like me, but he's not somebody I know. <laughs> what would be the noble, honorable thing to do in this circumstance? She's alone. And I don't know who this guy is. I'm going to attack the guy behind me because whoever you are, you're an imposter, and that's worse than wh whoever or whatever she is. So he turns around and he attempts to stab Bisco. Close combat. And I roll a bloody three again, uh, which gives him a total of nine. Close combat, Bisco. So I have a question. So if this was a free action, can I go this before he attacks me? Well, no, because you didn't have a turn. It's his turn. Okay, so, that's, so, then, so then free actions can only happen on your turn? Right. Okay. Now, you can force your next turn, which means you basically lose your next turn to use it now for something purely defensive, and you can right. then use that to go invisible if you want, but you'll lose your next action. Okay. I'll, I'll do that for next time. I didn't... Oh, got it. Okay. Do you want to do that? You, so you can do that. No, so he, he misses then? Well, no, it's just harder for him to hit. Right. What I'm saying is, you, no, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm fine not doing that. I'll, 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 I'll keep that in mind. Uh, I didn't understand how that worked. That's, but that's fine. So, continue on. He, he tried to attack. Yeah, I mean, you would, you would still need to roll, whether you turn invisible or not. You'd still need to roll your defense roll against his attack. It's just yeah. his attack would be less likely to hit if you were invisible. Yeah. But for you to turn invisible, you'd have to force your next action, which means lose your next action, to turn invisible now. Yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't need to do that. Okay, close combat. Roll two dice and add whatever. Do, do, do. Well, we roll ones and twos, right? For expertise? Yes. This die likes ones. No, not used for for D and D character generation. There we go. 11, 12, 14. He misses you. So, just as well you didn't blow that next action. All right, 
So, we got this guy, we got this guy, this guy's frozen, that guy's unconscious. <laughs> Wait, what happened to the guy who was out on the trail that Isco was... that Captain Harrow's is fighting? Oh, there's a guy fighting Captain Harrow's. Yeah. And you did blast there's him, and it did hurt, but he's not out. Okay. Which, which should have put a little distance between us. <laughs> he lunges forward. Close combat rolled Captain Harrow's. I got a 12. Uh, oh, I rolled poorly. I got an 8. 8. Nine, ten, eleven. You lose 2 endurance. He stabs at you with his enchanted obsidian knife. Okay. Thought you'd just walk all over us, did you? Did you? Ha! Yeah, all right, okay. so that's all the Aztecs. <laughs> Man. So I should probably shoot him in the face again. Or run away. You could totally run away. Run away is a completely viable option. So. You can't let them, can't let them sacrifice those villagers. Nah. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Yep, so again, a rules question. Invisibility, is there any reason not to attack while still invisible? I mean, it seems like that would be the best, the smartest thing to do. <laughs> there is no reason not to attack while invisible. And I also noticed that you can, I can turn someone else invisible as long as I'm touching them. That's, that's, I yes, didn't you realize can. that. That's really extra <clears throat> useful. You have to like, is it, only, is it only as long as I'm touching them? Right. Is it only as long as I'm touching them or is that, or, or what? No, you have to be. <clears throat> As long as yeah. you're touching them, you can keep them invisible. As long as I'm touching them, okay. If you let go, they invisible? turn invisible again. They are considered your clothing. So that, that, then that does both of us, then. To who? What? So, so that would do both of us, like we're sneaking around somewhere. Yes. Yes, it would. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to do try to shape shift to look just like this other guy, and then I'm going to smack him. <laughs> Not invisible, but shape shift. Right, shape shift to so like just like him, and then smack him again. Flaming sword. <laughs> okay. Just a weird factor. <laughs> close, close, close combat. <laughs> I got eleven. Ah, ten. Oh wow! So you swing your <laughs> flaming sword, and he like <laughs> parries it. Awesome. <laughs> Captain Harrow's facing off against uh, an Aztec warrior who has every intention of disemboweling you. <clears throat> Range combat, I assume? Yeah. Foosh. Average. I rolled till at 12. What? 16. Yeah, you hit him. You, he's down. Try to take one alive. Foosh. I'm looking at it. <laughs> well, none of them are dead unless you really want them to be. So, but this guy takes a plasma bolt to the center of the chest and just falls backward, and he's he's out of it. Doctor Anna, you are faced facing a guy who is frozen, and your another guy has his back to you who is fighting Isco. Ah. Hmm. Well, that guy's frozen. Is does Isco look like he needs help? Nah. Nah. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, darn it! Shooting duck. Uh, 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 yeah, frozen people aren't as fun. Does uh, Erlang need help? Yeah. You're down, right? Somebody Erlang, else. Erlang, help. Erlang flew off. You don't know what Erlang's up to. Oh, somebody, go after Erlang. Okay, I can take care of the frozen dude. Yeah. Does somebody else need help? I go after Erlang. Yeah, Erlang Shen went after the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs! <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys did discuss the whole dinosaur issue, so you run off after Erlang to find dinosaurs? Yeah. yeah. If these guys are good, then yeah. <laughs> Archaeologist is like, dinosaurs! <laughs> <laughs> okay, you run down the path, and like I described to Lloyd, it goes down and then it seems to end abruptly because they took a sharp like 98, 100, 100 degree U-turn and then the dinosaurs are parked like like there. 
So you run down and around the corner, and Erling Shin's on the ground in front of you. Ah. On his feet, or...? No, no, he's laying on his back. <laughs> Birds ah. over his head. Ahead of you are four enormous dinosaurs in very Rococo-looking harness and stuff. So, And on the back of the Spinosaurus, which is the vaguely Tyrannosaurus with the alligator head looking thing, um, is another Aztec priest. Do who unfortunately them... has just used his action, so he can't attack you yet. Oh, okay. I have a bow. Do I have an action to go with You it? certainly do, because you have God's own running. <laughs> All right, then. I'm going to take, take a shot at him. You take a shot. Range combat. For you, it's agility plus power level. For him, right. it's also... Oh, total of 14. Can you beat a 14? 17. Damn it. No, he... 14, 15, 16, 17. He takes two. And uh, the, the, the priests are not the peak physical physical specimens that the uh, warriors are. So uh, you hit him in the chest with an arrow and, uh, and he falls off his dinosaur. So that's not great for him. Uh, Michael! <clears throat> oh, I'm going to jog up to my frozen friend and pop him on the side of the head and knock him out. <laughs> Or maybe you punch the jaw, whatever. Well, he's, like, full-on helpless, so... <laughs> no, I just want to uh, knock him out. That's all. We, we'll just say so that happens without a roll. You just walk up to him and yeah. bonk, and he just <laughs> falls over. So there's that. <laughs> Erling Shen! Uh, you are... Um, what? <laughs> wait, wait, one... Leslie, what? <laughs> I said, you said, take one alive. <laughs> well, they're all they're all alive, uh, unless you actually wanted to kill them. They're all alive. So, uh, okay, Erlang is down and unconscious. So, yep. at which point the dinosaurs go crazy because the guy who is controlling them is unconscious now. So, we have two brontosauruses, a tyrannosaurus, and a spinosaurus. Mm -hmm. Human beings strapped to a couple of them. Well, yeah, but those are back there. Whereas in oh. front of us, we have. Well, we've got. Let's see. Brontosaurus, Brontosaurus. Dr. Anna. So let's see who we attack. I'll just roll some random mm -hmm. dice four times. Let's say if anybody gets uh, less than seven, it's Dr. Anna. Brontosaur, Brontosaur, Tyrannosaurus, Spinosaurus. Brontosaurus, no. Brontosaurus isn't going to attack you. Uh, no. Okay. The Tyrannosaurus. Okay, the bron two Brontosauruses want to get away from the Predators, so they just kind of stomp off into the jungle. In the same direction, because strength in numbers. The Spinosaurus chases off after them. The Tyrannosaurus steps forward and nah, and attempts to eat Dr. Anna. So... <laughs> This is close combat. Yes. So I know, this is one of those cases that running away sounds. Good. I got a thirteen. Uh, close combat. So where am I? That's, I don't get my power on this one. So you don't. Do I? You don't, you don't have damage resistance. I don't have damage resistance. I don't think I have damage resistance. I don't then, believe she has damage resistance. No, then it's just your brawn. So I have a 10. Oh my god. Okay, 10, 11, 12, 13. It chomps down on you. Take two endurance. Oof. Man. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, we're, we're a bunch of glass cannons now that we look at it. Hey! Ow. Meanwhile, everybody else hears the unmistakable sound because you've actually heard it in the last week because you guys drove off a Tyrannosaurus from attacking Tranquility. You hear mm -hmm. the unmistakable sound 
of the roar of a Tyrannosaurus Rex attacking someone. It's right over there. Uh, we better get going in that direction, I think. So, Isco! Oh, all so of the... the uh, all of the Aztecs are down, is that correct? I've, I haven't missed anybody, have I? Oh, it's not finding one in front of me? Is he down now? I think we're good. No, I think the one uh -huh. I think the one fighting Isco is still up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So Isco. Yep. Shrek him again. D does it not discombobulate him when he looks just like himself? <laughs> well, let me see. No, he rolled really well. He knows that you're some kind of uh, <laughs> spirit spirit enemy. And so <laughs> and he rolls really well on his defenses. Fifteen. Can you beat a fifteen? Jeez. Yeah. One. He blocks with his obsidian knife. You, you don't understand what he's saying, do you? No. Okay, well, he is saying very aggressive things at you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Captain Harrows, you just knocked this guy out. Dr. Anna just zoomed off down after Erlang Shen, after which you heard the roar of a Tyrannosaurus attacking someone and something that sounded kind of like someone eating ribs. <laughs> oh, no. uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, I will cautiously approach the uh, sound of rib eating because you never know when somebody started a barbecue. But on the other hand, I'm afraid I know what that is. And <laughs> do you have any like special movement powers you got going on, or what's what's your deal? No, not really. Not, not at this point. Okay, so it'll take your whole action to like jog down there and then around the corner and see um, Dr. Anna being chewed on by a very well-dressed Tyrannosaurus Rex. You don't see from where you are other dinosaurs, but you can hear very loud stomping through the jungle off in that direction to your right, which you think must be the other dinosaurs running away. I mean, okay. that's the reasonable assumption. So that takes your whole action to get there, though. Uh, okay, but that, that actually is Dr. Anna getting chewed on. Okay, that changes things. I'm going to... I'm right annoyed at that Tyrannosaurus now. <laughs> it's just his nature. Okay, so Dr. Anna, you are hurt but not down. Nope. Tyrannosaurus I... is attempting to eat you. Well, we need to fix that. So, All right. what's your plan for that? I will attack it because it needs. I need to get it off of me. And fortunately, I do have Say strike. No, close combat. What? Close combat and strike. Okay, so you add your brawn and your power level. It rolls a total of eleven. Dang! What the hell? <laughs> Aren't you glad you have expertise, expertise now? right? Yes. <laughs> I think I froze a, a three twos and a, a fourth ones just now. <laughs> okay, now I gotta do math again. Oh, six, ten, fifteen. Wow. Okay, I eleven. Okay, eleven. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So you do two endurance to it. Um. So am I mad or do I run away? I'll say seven or less, I want to run away. Okay, it decides that you are not enough meat for this much trouble. So uh, it appears to be rethinking the idea of attacking you. It doesn't get an action yet, but it, when, it, when it does, you think it's probably going to go find something else to eat. So... It doesn't fight back. Uh, Michael. No, that priest, that priest over there won't fight back. <laughs> Michael, what you doing? There is um, a one Aztec in front of you that is fighting Isco. We're not even going to be gentle about this. Mind glass the bugger. <laughs> okay, he rolls his mental combat plus 2d6. Woohoo! I rolled really well. So, am 12 I, total. Is it considered range combat or no? Mental combat. Mental combat, okay. So that's my power and presence. Power and presence plus 2d6. Okay. And 
All right, you blast his brain. He gets a punishing migraine, and what is from? But you can't see his face because you're behind him. But what Isco sees is his 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 whole face kind of squinches up and goes, ah, uh, and then he collapses. <laughs> hey, I had that guy. Dang. Do not underestimate the power of the horse. That's what I uh, say. <laughs> is down. All the Aztecs are down. The dinosaurs go. Uh, the Tyrannosaurus <laughs> has decided that Dr. Anna is not enough meat to bother with. And it turns and goes, <laughs> thunk, thunk, thunk. And it looks off where the Brontosauruses ran. And now there's a lot of meat. I'll go follow after them. Dun, 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 dun. And it follows <laughs> after the Brontosauruses bellowing its intentions the entire way. <laughs> so, back to Isco. You hear the uh, distant sounds of a Tyrannosaurus enjoying itself. Hmm. Maybe it's best to go that away. Maybe it's best to go that away. Okay, do you have any movement that. powers, Isco? No. All right, well, you end up essentially where Dr. Anna is standing, and that's your whole yeah. action. Yeah. Uh, Captain Harrows. Oh, Dr. Captain Harrows is also standing there. Captain Harrows, mm -hmm. what you going to do? I suppose I ought to check on Erlang. All right, Erlang uh, wakes up. Uh, Captain Harrows just does this and wakes you up. Ah! What the hell just hit me? <laughs> You hear the distant sounds of a Tyrannosaurus hunting. <laughs> but there's nobody around you other than your friends. It's like the end of Wizard of Oz. <laughs> hey, why don't you guys go find the captives? I'll go tie up these guys. Uh, yes. That's Dr. Anna. Uh, Captain, Harris, Captain Harris has, okay, from Dr. Anna's point of view, uh, Isco just ran up. Captain Harrow's had run up just a moment before and has woken up Erlang Shen, who now has one endurance. And uh, as do I. As do you. So now, what, what does Dr. Anna want to do? <sighs> Keep going, but yeah. It's this, okay. Uh, there's nothing in front of us at this point besides you know, all the dinosaurs have ran off, right? Yes, they do seem to have run off as more or less a group. There's the brontosauruses that are being chased by the spinosaurus that is being chased by oh. a slightly larger margin by the tyrannosaurus. But they're all hmm, essentially okay. going the same direction. Alright, so if I t so I shoot down the spinosaurus chasing the brontosauruses, that'll distract the, the tyrannosaurus enough to, to be able to chase after the brontosauruses. Got it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go run, chase after and pa bypass the uh, Tyrannosaurus and go after the the one in between. And then we can save the people in the back of Brontosaurus. I like yeah. this. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but I will be your... taking it from a distance. I've got an arrow. I've got a bow. So okay, range combat. Make some rules. Rulings. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, you hit the Spinosaurus. A solid hit. Uh, it doesn't slow down. You sure you hit it? Dinosaurs have a lot of endurance. Not to mention the fact that I think even when they die, they're not sure they're dead yet. So. <laughs> Not much in the brain to tell them that. Okay. Spinosaurus has taken that. Tyrannosaurus has taken that. I'll just make another the Brontosaurus too, in case you guys shoot at them. All right. Uh, it's Dr. Anna. Michael! I'm not the speed that can keep up with this, so I'm going to tie up our captives and make sure they stay quite unconscious. Uh, you can do that quite easily, so you work on that. 
Erlang, <laughs> awake. I'll get up, look around, <clears throat> uh, summon a cloud, fly over to Michael, grab Michael, fly off after the dinosaurs, and tell Michael, you want to mentally blast one or two of those to make them stop moving? Because otherwise we're going to be here all day killing them. <laughs> Erling Shen comes out of the sky and grabs Michael. Yeah, they got two sized brains. I'm betting it'll do a bit of damage. Yeah, let, let's see. We've got like, you know, 15 square tons of endurance and a brain the size of my thumb. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they have a lot of endurance. The whole brain part is going to be a lot easier. Yeah, a yeah. couple of weeks ago, you guys all were ganging up on one Tyrannosaurus, and all you really managed to do is drive it away. So, um, there's lots and lots of endurance. Okay, so, moving forward, uh, the dinosaurs get their turn, but they're all just basically chasing each other running, or and or running away from each other, so that comes and goes. Um, Isco, do you have any ranged attacks? No. Okay. No range attacks and no movement power, so you can like jog after them, but you're not really up to doing anything. Guess all you do, so. Captain Harrow's, are you doing anything fun and exciting? Um, somebody's going to tie up our captains. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I I ought to know how to tie some knots. I am going to yeah. tie so. our captains. Okay, well, there's on the ground in front of you. I will, the, I will the Tyrannosaurus them. left behind actually the Spinosaurus is what he fell off of but you don't know that because you went here but anyway the dinosaurus left behind apparently another Aztec priest so you can start by tying him up yes and this one's hardly been used at all and, and yeah I, and, and I will berate him for uh, 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 for per, for service to his god Yeah, he was the one who was yeah. controlling the dinosaurs which is why they're running amok now uh, okay, <laughs> Dr. Anna. This is definitely all his all his fault. <laughs> you think so, <laughs> Dr. Anna? What you doing? Take another shot at it. Let's see how many diseases it takes to knock down a big boy like that. At the Spinosaurus. All right. Ten, thirteen, sixteen. All right. <laughs> another arrow. <laughs> Solid hit. Doesn't slow it down. <laughs> Michael. Oh, we'll mind blast the bugger. Okay, you've got four to pick from. There's two brontosauruses at the front, Spinosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. Which one you mind blast? That's the one that she's concentrating on. Okay. We'll turn it, his little pea sized brain into a uh, pea soup. It makes a <laughs> mental combat roll. Oh, it doesn't have mental combat, so it only gets one die. And then it adds its presence to that die. Its presence is extraordinary. But you need to beat a seven. <laughs> so. That is quite an impressive presence, I have to admit. I think I'll beat it by, by like more than half. 15. Well, you need to roll because it, it, it matters. I did. I rolled a 15 total. Oh, 15? Okay, seven. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten. 10. 11, 12, 13. You do three endurance to it. Okay. It staggers. Ugh. It like, it's like misses a step and like its face like plows against the ground for a bit, but then it, it recovers and continues charging after the brontosaurus. Wow. That's pretty good for a pea sized brain. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Erling Shen, you just... That should allow the Tyrannosaurus to, to catch up a little. Okay, Brandon, are there people tied to the backs of all four of these critters? There are. There's, the two, on each, the there's, there's two on each Brontosaurus and one on the Spinosaurus and one on the Tyrannosaurus. I will fly past the Tyrannosaurus and grab the person on the Tyrannosaurus first. Well, you'd have to, like, stop and, like, cut them loose. It's like I will action. do that. Then. All right. Still holding, yeah, still holding Michael. Cut the guy loose. Grab him. Not a problem. Uh, you, your hands are now full of people. <laughs> He's awake. He's a, you take the gag. Take the, uh, let's say this one's a woman. You take the gag out of her mouth. She's like a 40, 45 year old black woman. 
Like, no, I won't take the gag out of her mouth. I'm just going to drop her on the ground. And we got more people to rescue. Oh, okay. She, she, can, untie, she can finish untying herself on, once I've let her go. Makes sense. Uh, okay. Moving around. Dinosaurs. They hmm. don't. They're, 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 they're kind of single minded, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, Isco helping Captain Harrow's tie people up, I guess, at this point. Gathering yeah, up, I'm gonna gathering up bass we'll, we'll do anything to them, so yeah, I'll help out with that. All right. Uh, unless you actually want any of them to die, they're all uh, savable. Oh, Let's okay. see. Uh, Captain Harrow's, same thing, I guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I did, you know, the distance people are doing their distance thing right now. Yeah, you, you occasionally hear like. Rrr from out in the jungle so you know they're doing something so yeah, and you have no, radios have... you have radios you can say Dr. Annie you guys still alive and she's like yeah we're still alive you know whatever okay <laughs> uh, Dr. Anna the we drop them off I'm sorry what I said do you want to come pick up the hostages as we drop them off hmm. that's an idea oh yeah okay you know what well, well you guys just finished wrapping up, tying up all the Aztecs, so your next action you can jog after them to start. Yeah, I, I, I suppose when when that gets suggested, Isco and Dr. Harris look at each other and go, eh? Okay. <laughs> all right, you guys deal with these two mon monsters. I'm going after the fast, the, the prey that's further ahead. Okay. Yeah, see if we can slow them down some. Yeah. yeah what you doing, Dr. Anna? Well, um... Since I, my arrows aren't taking up much of a hit on these on on on, on this beastie, I think I'll go ahead and just go after the other two and try. At least, you know, worst case scenario, I can always climb up one and and, and start rescuing the people off of it. Feel like a Fred Flintstone uh, routine, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anna, Doctor Anna. <laughs> oh, that was not a good idea. I can tell right now. <laughs> yeah, so run on ahead, and let's start with the first one. If I can stop the first one, the second one hopefully will stop. So, uh, all right, what are you like, trying to do to stop the first brontosaurus? Uh, does it have like, uh, how uh, how were they controlling it? Were they use there was there any like, like magic? Huh? <laughs> magic. Magic. Ah. Yeah, they do have they do have uh um reins, like a horse has reins. Oh, okay. They're just connected Run to the big to... golden masks that are on their heads. Oh, well, let's give that a try. Run up to it and climb you know, they, up remember it. Remember, you have to yell, whoa, horsey, when you do it. Yeah, it's, oh. yeah totally. Little dino. Run up to it and climb up it. All right. I'll give you that for free, because the All hard right. part will be yanking on the reins to get to stop. So <laughs> let's call that... Do you have... Uh, wait, hang on. Let me double-check something. Do you have animal empathy as a gift? No, I don't. Okay, hang on. There's other stuff you can do. Hang on. <laughs> do you have... Manipulation. That's a skill? That's a no. skill. Nope. Nope. All right. Nope. We'll roll 1d6 and add your presence. All right. I'm the one without a Okay, you you Doctor climb up, passenger, and the 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 <laughs> dinosaurs have like ladders hanging down on both sides. So climbing up is like not a role involving activity. You just run up next to it and just climb up the ladder to where the big saddle slash platform stuff is and you grab the reins and you go whoa whoa and it completely ignores you <laughs> hang on I gotta close my door as I say and Dr. Anna is a passenger <laughs> however there are two in addition in addition to what appear to be weeks worth of provisions behind you, there are also two people tied up. And as you climb up there, they're like, oof, oof, because they're, you know, they're like, <laughs> wrists are bound and they're tied to something and they're gagged. Oof, 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 oof. Okay, screw that. 
next move, if, if I can't do this move, next move, I'll start untying them until, and helping them out. If I can make a suggestion, that dinosaur is first for that one. <laughs> huh? Say that again? Back dinosaurs first if you're going to be dropping people off the backs of them. <laughs> you know, stampede. <laughs> and if that is going down the sides of them. Yeah, but there are still charging dinosaurs behind them. It's True. Like, what helps them up to the saddle? I mean, they're in the saddle whether or not the dinosaur stops or not. <clears throat> Somebody will eventually stop the dinosaur. I, I, th I think his point is that if she drops human beings off between the brontosaurus and the spinosaurus that the spinosaurus will treat that as an appetizer on its yeah. way to the brontosaurus <laughs> okay but at least I'll tie them so they can but so that when the appetizer comes to leave they can go and then I'll hop on to the next one and do uh, the same Michael oh, oh Michael Mike, we're going to whack we're going to whack this sucker's little brain again and see if he'll go down I m m here's something that uh, Michael would realize without a roll so I'll just yeah. tell you. Um, <laughs> what you are doing is you are trying to cause enough pain for the dinosaur to go unconscious. And the problem being that its nervous system is not advanced enough. You, you mentioned, you said earlier, they don't know when they're dead. That was you, right? Yeah. Okay. Y what you're doing, it's not smart enough to notice it. I mean, yeah. you are you are legitimately causing tremendous pain to it. You, it's taken five endurance damage so far, and realistically, it could probably take another five before it went unconscious or fell over or whatever. Oh, but hole. there are faster ways to get it to stop. How much does it weigh? <laughs> well, I was thinking the mind hold thing you tried on the Aztec guy. Well, that was the other thing I was thinking. I will try the mind hold then. Yeah, just just go monster. go past the whole pain response issue entirely and just tell it to stop. Tell it to stop. Yep. Oh, I rolled double sixes, so I think uh, with all my power and the presence, and, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and this is which one? This. That's the Stegosaurus, because. Spinosaurus. I'm the Spinosaurus, yeah. I'm guessing if the Tyrannosaurus then will collide with him. Unfortunately, well, there's. there's one they're not that close together. The, the the Spinosaurus is right behind the Brontosaurus's, and yeah. then the Tyrannosaurus chewed on Dr. Anna for a while before it followed, so there's like a fairly big gap yeah. between those two. So the Spinosaurus, anyway, the Spinosaurus, it doesn't freeze the way the Aztec guy did. It's more like a gung, 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 gung. Okay. Let's get the guy off before the Tyrannosaurus does catch up. <laughs> okay. Uh, John Erlang. Uh, tell the woman that we just rescued, as I set her on the ground, go that way and point her directly away from the Tyrannosaurus back to where our heroes are. Uh huh. Then, she runs off that way. And she's like, then yanking her fly, <laughs> uh, Michael up to the Spinosaurus and grab the person that's attached to the Spinosaurus. Let's see. Um,. Age, gender, ethnicity. Let's see who you got. You have a young girl who is appears to be American Indian. <laughs> She's like ten years old. <laughs> so you cut her loose. Oh, they're gonna sacrifice. Uh, okay, I want to beat the shit out of these assholes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we can, we can the, the remaining ones back there. Don't worry. We, let's go check, get the rest of the people off the brontosaurus. So you, you cut her loose, and uh, she... Otherwise, Adelaide is just going to keep chasing them down until she collapses due to her exhaustion. We don't want to leave, you know, we don't want to leave her in between the city of forest and the... we got to carry her back. Uh, let's see. Does the Spinosaurus break out of its thing? Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> No? Yes. It is possible <laughs> that it doesn't. It rolled double sixes. However, Leslie, roll two d six. You need a twelve. <laughs> and then I add. And then I add what? Then I'm supposed to add. No, it's just one. three. It's it's just trying to break out of it, and you're essentially doing the GM's well, then, roll. If I add three, it's thirteen. <laughs> okay. It, it it just stands there. <laughs> Let's go. Um, jogging off after the 
carnival of carnage in front of you, and uh, there's a, a bl middle-aged black lady, and then further down the path, there's a young American Indian girl. So you guys are just getting gathering them up and making sure they're not hurt and so forth, or what? Uh, before I do that, I was going to give a value off of the ones we're tying up. Oh, that's well, smart. Well, you know, you know from personal experience that the the obsidian knives are apparently magic in some way, and cool. you know that when you were hitting them, there was some kind of golden force field protection effect. Maybe, maybe that's probably to... also from and you, but with your with Isco's with with Iskalander's knowledge. Yeah. You think that's probably another enchanted item of some kind, so you're so probably I'll... one of the two people here who are best suited to like divest them of anything that could possibly be a useful magical item. And, and I would do that. And actually, um, Francisco would do that even if his kid alarm wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. All so right. I'll take anything interesting or maybe magical-ish and interesting. All right. The the, uh... Uh, uh, yes. Another rules question though. When I was in, when I was attacking with the flaming sword, oh, right. should I have added my power to yes. that? Okay, I wasn't doing that. That's why it's I was down. Strike, okay. right? Strike. Yeah, that exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. I, 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 no, I should have added that. Oh, well, you are oh, pretty effective without it. But yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. it should be two d six normally. Two d six plus yeah. your brawn plus your power level if it's strike, yeah. or or blast yeah. also works. So. That way. One thing I was thinking, I haven't read the rules about this, so if it's already there, uh, please stop me. Uh, if you attack and you get, like, do really well, you get, like, extra extra benefit, right? No. Oh, I, I thought you did for some reason. I thought there was oh, like that. oh, yes. Well, okay. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. The higher the number, the more damage you do. Yes. 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 If you hit exactly, it's one endurance, and every three more than that, it's another endurance. So right. let's say you so, needed to say you need to roll an eleven, that's one. Yep. If you rolled a fourteen, yep. that'd be two. And then seventeen right. would be. Yep. So it's gonna be interesting if there was some counter rule for that for defense. Um, I'm not sure how that would work exactly. So if you roll there, really well on your defense, no, I know there isn't, but I think that that, there, that you might want to consider consider that. Well, how would what would what would that look like though? A temp maybe a temporary extra. Uh, like, get some endurance back. I don't no, want endurance. I think, I think that would make combat take take too long. Uh, possibly, but I mean, if, if, but my, my point is, if you're gonna do really, if you're gonna do extra for offense, you should maybe just figure out how, how to do something for defense. I, I can think about it. And think what, what what might what might make what might make sense. If you think of something fun, let me know. Mm. All right, so that's us go uh, divesting the Aztecs of their magical gear. Yep. Donald, are you there? He's gone. He is heading back. Yes, I, need I, take everyone, I need to take everyone to the restaurant I'm back. And actually, and divest, wanna... divesting attacks of gear sounds good to me. All right. They're so you're divesting of gear as well. We, can we take like a yeah. brief restroom break? Is this a uh, opportune time? Yeah. Sure. Okay. We we will get with Doctor Anna when we come back. And we are back. So uh, while. Isco and Captain Harrows are divesting Aztecs of their magical accoutrements. Dr. Anna is currently on the... And non-magical accoutrements. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, you're just stripping down to loincloths then. All right. Um, I, I, how am I to know what's magical and what's not? <laughs> fair enough. Uh, Dr. Anna is on the Spinosaurus, is that correctly? No, no, no. I'm on the... Bron I'm on like the front. Uh, oh, you're on uh, one of the brontosauruses. You're on one of the brontosauruses, and attempting to stop it was your last action, and it is apparently hasn't noticed that you're there. So, <laughs> because that's kind of how that works. So now what? Okay, untie them, the two people on the on there, so that they're ready to move. But tell them to stay put because if you get down now, you're gonna get smushed by the pe by the dinosaurs behind you or eaten. Uh, let's see if we panic. I will roll a couple of dice, and really low means I panic. Nope. Uh, they both look at you, and they look around, and they nod at you because you appear to know what you're doing. Because <laughs> so. I say panic, the sword's coming back out. Damn it! <laughs> no, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. 
And let's see who... How did who... the mad scientist become the diplomat? <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, you got a... Uh, wow, man, it's all women so far. You have a woman in her 20s, and she appears to be Mexican. And you have a teenager, another girl. Where, was it all women working in the... Fe- it's, this is starting to look like this is not a coincidence. Like that all they took were women. What? Sounds kind of sexist to me. But... It really does, which is odd because the Aztecs, these, these guys would actually much prefer to take men. Yeah. As it happens, because the stronger the sacrifice, the better the gods like it. It's just it so happens apparently that it was just all women working in the field, so they took what they could get. Um, did did uh, real life Aztecs also take to have slaves? Imagine uh, they have captives that they take in war, and sometimes they will keep them as slaves for a period of time before they get. Sacrifice, but eventually they right. pretty much all get sacrificed. Well, um, I, I go ahead and uh, send up over the uh, radio uh, what God the guy said they're from. Hey, anybody ever heard of <laughs> Tezcatlipoca? Tezcatlipoca. And um, Dr. Anna, being the sociologist of the group, would know Tezcatlipoca was uh, probably one of like the more evil, like the overtly evil of the mm. Aztec gods, god of night, associated with death and cold and mirrors, oddly enough. So, oh, yeah, there you go. Cold? I can work with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Arhan t- unties a, um, uh, a Mexican woman around 20 and a teenage uh, Anglo girl, probably 15, 16. Let's go, Leslie, who's where, where are Leslie, where are uh, Michael and Erling Shen at the moment? Well, Erling Shang supposedly has freed the woman that was tied to this Spinosaur. And I, yeah, Spinosaur. And I, and I still have the Spinosaur held. That's right. It's like, just like st- standing there. It's not quite um, sentient enough to be frozen in place the way the Aztec guy was it's more like it has been interrupted and it's hasn't quite figured out what it wants to do next that's more how that plays out so like it's not motionless it's more like it can't focus on what it wants to do next maybe I can help it go in another direction like towards the Tyrannosaurus which is coming up <laughs> from behind, actually. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Well, maybe. Well, since I can have mind control, and I don't know if it works on animals, I can try and make it decide to turn around and face the Tyrannosaurus. Or, or the you rest could, of the stuff you, going you could also use that power on the Tyrannosaurus, actually, which is on its way. You could also use that power on the Tyrannosaurus, which is on okay. its way to you as we speak. And teeth since I've got first. the. Um, and since I've got the uh, what is it the uh, the um, ultra power, I can control more than one thing at once. Well, you the ultra power lets you do one thing at a time. Yeah. What's that? The ultra power lets you do one thing at a time. Okay. But hang on a second. Let me double check your powers because we've got okay. Outside. Oh wait, is this? Have I? I have an old version of your character sheet because we gave you an ultra power. I know we did. Yeah, you put the ultra power in because I added it to my new new. At least I added it to the copy I have in my uh, Mac. <clears throat> Hang on, because I... I still haven't mastered. I thought for you. Sure... What you told me was that it's oh. the um. All right. Blast. Allows mass hysteria. Oh, that's Cap Harrow's. What the hell? Uh, Alright. <sighs> well, I'm already in the mind of the of the uh, Spinosaur, so... I, I it's apparently have an old version of your character sheet. So, yeah. for sake of argument, I'm pretty sure we had the mind control outside of the Ultra Power, which would allow okay. the mass 
hysteria thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, no, it was emotion control. Yeah. One of them I don't remember. <laughs> okay. We're just going to say, if you wanted to mind power. control the Tyrannosaurus, you can. Okay? You don't have to. Okay. I'm not telling you to. I'm just saying you can. But it's easier since I'm already in the mind of the uh, Spinosaur to just turn the Spinosaur around. <clears throat> they're, he equal, they're, to go. E they're equally easy. Equally easy. Okay. Let's push this. Since the Spinosaur doesn't know what it wants to do, let's make it head in the direction of the, of the Tyrannosaur. You just want to see dinosaurs fight. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> roll some dice. That'll give the Brontosaurus's time to get away with their human cargo and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, the total will be... In this case, it won't be as good as it's been, but probably still good enough. 13 points. 13 total. That's plenty. Yep. Uh, the Spinosaurus turns around, and you are mind-controlling it to do what, exactly? To, well, stand between um, the Brontosaurus's and the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Hey! Okay. Spinosaurus turns around, faces the charging Tyrannosaurus, and roars defiantly. <laughs> I think the line is, now would be a good time to run. Fortunately, yep. for the people on the ground, including the person you just let go, which was a, a young Native American girl, if I remember correctly, who's on the Spinosaurus. Yeah. Um, the Tyrannosaurus and the Spinosaurus are now paying attention to each other, and she can book off toward yeah. <laughs> uh, safer. That was regions. the whole idea. <laughs> Early Shen, what's up, man? Fly the toes towards the Brontosauruses. Who are Brontosauri? Brontosauri? Uh, Brontosauruses. Okay. Uh, the, who, which are continuing to run away. Yep. <laughs> On one of them, you've got Dr. Anna, who has just finished freeing a couple of people who wisely are staying still until a Brontosaurus comes to a complete stop. So. On the other one, you've got two tied up people. Please remain seated until the Brontosaurus comes to an end. <laughs> keep all hands, uh, keep all limbs inside the Brontosaurus. <laughs> Sorry, I'll fly up to the other Brontosaurus that has two other people on it and see about getting them loose. Easily done. <laughs> and now time for dinosaur on dinosaur action <laughs> and considering weather it's even hot dinosaur on dinosaur action it's more humid than anything else because it's been ready for days <laughs> dinosaur on dinosaur action <laughs> <laughs> so it's like more more moist than hot because <laughs> yeah, it rained for days and now the temperature's back up to 95. WWF! So like dinosaur steam. wrestling! <laughs> Alright. Uh, the Tyrannosaurus lunges at the Spinosaurus uh, which uh, fights off its attacks and the Spinosaurus attempts to chomp on the Tyrannosaurus which bats its head away with its own head. So you have a fairly <coughs> large toothy violent thing going on but they haven't actually hurt each other yet let's go yep so I'm uh, trying out the little devices see if I can make any of them work <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can but hang on you you you're like the only person who might be able to. Let me think. Because your your other person is like an otherworldly entity. Yeah. All right. Let's say do one dice and add your presence. Presence. I think it's yeah. 
six. Okay. Uh, you hold it up and you can feel that you are surrounded by protective energies. Huh. That's pretty cool. What, 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 what am I holding up? Is it a dagger or something else? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's not one of the great big gold discs. It's a smaller round disc with it's gold. Like, and huh. it's deceptively heavy. Like, huh. it's only about this big around, but it must weigh as much as a sack. Of, it's like five pounds. It's like crazy heavy for the size it is. Because huh. gold is surprisingly heavy if you've ever picked it up. Um, cool. As is lead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's one of the uh, amulet type things that uh, it's not on a necklace. It was actually like a harness, like over both shoulders and around the back and right. with a disc right here in the middle of the chest that the warriors were wearing. Anyway, uh, cool. uh, because you haven't paid points for it, it would not be completely reliable in combat. Yeah. But since you don't already have any armor or damage resistance, it might be better than nothing. <laughs> so. Well, I do have damage resistance. <laughs> I, I do have an air resistance from fire form, but not in my not my regular human form. Good. All right. Yeah. Uh, Captain Harrows. Uh huh. You guys have stripped these guys down to their loincloths and body paint. What are you doing now? Um. Okay. One of these guys is the priest, right? Two of them, actually. Two of them are the priests. Yeah, one, one probably got a few broken bones. Uh, one got, if I remember correctly, impaled by an arrow, and the other one got smashed against a tree by Michael. Okay. I'm gonna go slightly mad scientist off the deep end, then. <laughs> not much here to go mad science on. They're they're very low tech. Well, okay, I'll just go. I'll just do the mad part then. Like the only, the only metal on them is gold. Literally, the only metal on them is gold. Yeah. Everything so else I, is is, I, is either I, animal based or or stone. Yes, I expect to put all that gold to really good use. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to collect up the hostages, guys? I also <laughs> look at them and tell them, "How dare you take these sacrifices?" from the town. <laughs> They're unconscious, so, you know. <laughs> oh, it, it, well, okay. <laughs> so it's not, a, a, it's not was, as satisfying was, as you I was, I, was wanting to, I was wanting to screw with one of them's head. Can I bring one of them around? <laughs> you can bring one around for the sole purpose of gloating. <laughs> monologue! <laughs> yeah, no, I... How how dare you uh, how dare you take the take these sacrifices from the town? That is displeasing to the cold and the dark. And I use environmental control to make it cold and dark around me. <laughs> uh, is this a priest or a, or a warrior? Oh, a priest. Okay. I gave him a bonus die because he's a priest. Guess how many ones are rolled? Oh. <laughs> the dice are not with you tonight. No, they are not. Not so, not so much. Not so much. All right. Brand, if it helps, I rolled a sixteen, so it's really cold and dark. All right. Well, you know, there's there's no convert like one who was absolutely convinced they were right before you showed them they were wrong. So, this guy is like completely and utterly convinced that, wow, goodness gracious, you clearly have the blessing of hang on, Tizcatlipoca. And uh, wow, he just very nearly made a huge mistake. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for sparing him from making this enormous mistake uh, and displeasing Tizcatlet Bucket. Meanwhile, yes. Dr. Anna, on the back of a brontosaurus. You see on the other brontosaurus, 
uh, John Erlang and Michael have freed another two people. Oh, okay, good. I don't have to. I don't have to uh, to try to get to the next one. All right, cool. <sighs> All right. Uh... No, if you can bring the if you can bring the brontosauruses to a stop, everybody can get um, off. I happen so. to have animal empathy. What you do? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't work. I'm gonna have to. I'm. I'm. I'm, stri I'm getting down on the ground and. Not to mention, I've discovered that the tiny little pea brains inside these critters are pretty easily controlled. Because if yeah, that doesn't they... work, I'm going for Achilles heels on the animal. <laughs> yeah, from Michael's point of view, they are hard. They are hard to overcome with pain, but they're very easy to stop or control. Hmm. So the mind hold, kidding. mind hold, and mind control work great. The uh, mental blast uh, takes not so much <laughs> a lot of time before they notice it. Because, ah, like, I was just going to make it physically possible for them to be able to stand under their own weight. Well, that that would work too. <laughs> so what we'll do is we, we'll, since I'm close to this brontosaurus while he's freeing the captives, I'll just put a nice little mind hold on him. Well, you are currently on a Spinosaurus, which is no, currently fighting with a Tyrannosaurus. I'm still carrying Michael. Oh, I can. Oh, I'm I sorry. I can let them go. I can let them go because they're going to let natural instincts take over. <laughs> yeah, and that's so, right. Michael's with. Tell, tell, the, uh, tell the villagers where to go from. Oh, hang on. Do you want to go? Do you go? Go ahead. I'll leave the door open. You can come back if you want. Uh, Susan dropped off Sebastian and yeah. then left. And then he's like, What? You're leaving me here? And then <laughs> now he's at the yeah. door to the bedroom wondering, Should I leave? Should I stay? <laughs> no, he's leaving. Which of, the, which of these two things might be more interesting? It's like he's just confused at the whole inter interchange. So, yeah, okay, so Michael's with. Erlang Shen, Erlang Shen flew up yeah, to the brontosaurus. Yeah, because the two, so. the two big so carnivores the two, are going to do what comes naturally. The two big carnivores at this point are simply going to fight until one of them eats <laughs> the other. So. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to mine hold on the uh, brontosaur. All right, roll some dices. <laughs> okay. At this point, we're talking 14, 16. Okay. One of the brontosauruses, again, it takes a minute, not a minute, not a literal minute, it takes a moment for it to realize, for the, for its body to get the message, but it like, doom, 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 and it just kind of, hmm. it's not being chased by carnivores anymore. <laughs> Food! Look! Right, food! The other one continues going. Actually, does the other one continue going? Because... If they're herd animals, it'll stay with the other one. We'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. It's not its go yet. We'll, we'll see. So, uh, Erlang Shen, you're with Michael. <clears throat> Michael has stopped the brontosaurus that you are on. The people who okay. are on the brontosaurus that you just <laughs> cut loose... Yeah. ...clearly want to get off now, but they're, they're kind of like waiting for the to go. Can we go? Can we go? There are, there are a couple of big predators down there fighting, so you might want to avoid them. How about we just follow you? Or you can wait a minute and we'll show you the way back. <laughs> uh, I'll pick them up and drop them off onto the ground. All right. So we're not standing on the back of the, you know, 30 tons of, of potentially angry herbivore. Fair enough. And then go get the other two that are on the other brontosaurus. Hey, zip forward to the other brontosaurus. Uh, other brontosaurus. Oh, it's, it does it. Okay, let's see. Severless, it uh, notices it's alone and it stops. Five. Okay, other brontosaurus. Gunk, gunk, gunk. Like, looks back. What, what, what? <laughs> oh. Gunk, right. gunk, gunk. Right. Come gunk. on, man. Gunk, gunk. They're herd animals. Gunk. And it stops. <laughs> it looks back at the other one. Nobody's eating the other one, so I don't see anything to run away from. So, gung, 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 gung. <laughs> it walks back to the other one. Now it notices there's something off. It's like it, like it, like, like looks at the other one, like, "What the hell's wrong with you, Earl? Hey, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, hey, 
Hey, Earl. Hey, Earl. Hey. I'll let Earl respond. I'll let Earl respond. <laughs> Earl's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you get two brontosauruses just kind of standing Why'd there. you stop, man? Uh, because there's nothing what? changing you? What? I stopped? <laughs> I don't know, man. I must have had a good reason, though, right? That's more or less <laughs> what, how it comes across. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's Cheech and Chong. Oh, there's hey, plenty of nice man. grass here. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. What Trees. threats are we still dealing with? Oh, the Tyrannosaurus and the Spinosaurus. So let me fighting just... each other. Are you guys going to try to interfere with their fight, or just let them keep going until one of them notices that there are smaller, chewy, less toothy pieces of meat around to chew on? What's your plan with them? One of them is eventually going to win. One thing, one, okay, um, left to right, what do you want to do about the two enormous predators? Isco? I'm not doing anything about them. I'm looking at the obsidian knives next. Okay. <laughs> Captain Arrows. I'm not doing anything about him. I am telling the priest that uh, the darkness and the cold are displeased because sacrifices of non-believers are not good. If if a non-believer is sacrificed, then it is no sacrifice at all. The sacrifice must be willing. <laughs> Just what they normally thought anyway, I thought. Is their entire religion? <laughs> yeah, because normally they took warriors of an enemy Aztec group, and all of those warriors were more than willing to die for their god. Right, right. I'm, 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 I'm reinforcing this so that when I let this guy go, he will spread the word and the people of Tranquility will be safe. Uh, because he thinks maybe you're an aspect of the god or something. Yeah, because the gods are displeased with the uh, sacrifice of the people. Non-believers. Okay, he's, right. he's not entirely convinced about what you're saying right now, but he's listening. He's keeping an open mind. He's keeping an open mind. Okay. Uh, all right, so Dr. Anna, you're on a brontosaurus, which has stopped and turned and gone and parked next to the other brontosaurus, and at this point, I guess they're just... Okay, the one that's that Michael has told to stop is can't focus a thought enough to actually do anything. But the one that you're on stopped at that one. Meh. All right, I guess I'll eat and just started <laughs> eating, you know, leaves and stuff off of trees. Yeah, it sounds like that's a good idea for the one that I stopped. Is yeah, you might want to eat lots of luscious so, what's, plant, plant what's material. What's Dr. Anna here? do? <laughs> mm, is it safe? It's probably still safer to keep the um, now free captives up on these guys just for now. Okay. I mean, unless there's any sign of the. Oh, um, the you, you you can one moment. You can see it is John Erlang's clear intention to fly over here and pick them up the way he did the ones on his brontosaurus. He's he's it's it's obviously his intention. There's no role or anything required for that. He can do what he wants. I was thinking it's I was trying to debate between you know putting him down on the ground in a orderly fashion and you know they're together again, or leaving them up here until things are calmed down. Well, other than the two big predators fighting, it's kind of calm now. One of those have to, is going to lose, and one of them is going to win. Also, He's... predators don't generally taste as good as herbivores. Yeah. So, I wish you could down on the ground, but that puts them again. Yeah, that ground's a good idea. Yeah. Michael, anything? Um. Well, I'm intending if if Erlang's got the captives uh, in hand, I'm going to go get on the ground myself and head back towards but not directly towards the fighting carnivores just in case I need to uh, push the winner away from us and our captive friends <laughs> so you leave John Erlang yeah. and move into the jungle well in the general direction of the, predator, of the two predators you basically have a path yeah. Which has where dinosaurs went, and then there's jungle on either side. So you but can I'm either go close enough to the predators and then dive a little bit into the jungle and watch them, basically. 
And when one wins, I'll push the other one away. Mm, okay. Erling? It's my intention to pick up all the hostages, pile them all up in a pile, and basically herd them all back towards where we were, where the where our other two companions are, just to get them out of here. Okay. We can fast forward a bit. Uh, the two predators fight for a bit. At some point, one of them will get a solid blow on the other one, and the other one will decide that you were not good to eat, and I don't want to fight you anymore, and will run off into the jungle, at which point the other one might chase it, might not. Let's see. Um, decides to chase it. Runs off into the jungle after it. So okay, cool. At this point, then I'll the... just follow Erlang and everybody else back to the main group. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point, you have a couple of brontosauruses, which seem fairly innocuous at the moment. They are, by this point, the first one has kind of, the, the mind hold has faded. So it's just, it. it's munching on leaves. So they're both munching on leaves. <clears throat> They've still got platforms on their backs full of supplies from... Um, Chickamaustock. You have a half dozen rescued farmers, essentially, and you've got you guys, and you've got a half dozen Aztecs, one of which is awake and seriously considering what Captain Harrows has been saying. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how... Let me see. How does it feel to be lectured on your piety by a sea captain? <laughs> <laughs> Actually... You start having a theological discussion with the other, with the priest that you're talking to, because he will start mentioning various myths and legends as counterpoints to what you're saying. <laughs> I'm willing to make it colder and darker for him. Well, there, that that is weighing heavily in your favor, but. Okay, so... And then, uh, he, and then he, like, comes up with, like, counter-arguments. Reason or presence plus manipulation? Well, are you are you trying to intimidate I, I, him? Or are you trying I, to convince him? Like, long-term? What, what I am trying to do is impress upon him that the people of Tranquility are protected and it displeases the gods when they are bothered. I guess I guess that would be presence. Okay. <clears throat> I'm rolling for shit. All right. <laughs> he seems Woohoo! He What you got? Sorry. 14. That's a very good roll. All right. It's a very He good see roll. he see he seems convinced for now. But you're not sure that this is really going to stick once he gets back among his own people and isn't dealing with you anymore. Just okay, you know. but he seems convinced for now. He's like, okay, well, you you make you make valid points. I I I, you know, I I, I can't. Uh, I, th I think you make valid points. Okay, that's cool. I I I will have Michael impress it upon him before we let him go. Does Captain have any way to like permanently brand him or mark him so he can't forget? That, that that's Captain. Wait, no, 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 we 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 shall not be vengeful, <laughs> messengers of the gods. <laughs> okay. We shall be kind messengers of the gods. Mm. We are right. here to correct their <laughs> just their uh, uh, just. Uh, can't find the word. Discretions. Uh, We're here to correct their discretions. You know, uh, I just as soon whack them silly because one of those captives was a child. Let let us let us. That also displeases the gods. Mm -hmm. And if we impress upon them that people outside of their culture are not suitable sacrifices. Then it's not our problem anymore. <laughs> and, and if we impress upon them that the people of tranquility are to be are protected, then they ain't gonna try anything because they see what happens. Hey, right. fast forwarding a bit. 
what's yeah. the what's the end result of this? Um, I'll uh, I'll let Michael impress upon you know Jedi mind impress upon this guy that <laughs> yes, his own culture, the sacrifices must come from his own culture. Tranquility is not. For him. I haven't experimented enough to know how long it's gonna stick. Well, Michael would know this much. Some, if you tell somebody something that like is goes directly contrary to their normal way of life, it's not gonna it's not gonna stick for very long. Right, but, right, but, not, but not using sacri- would not using sacrifices from a non Aztec group not be contrary. Actually, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's contrary. That's contrary because that that's a core part of what they do. He's 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 just about convinced by me that the gods are displeased at the sacrifices from outside of their own people. And I, I'm using Michael to like just push him over the edge so that by the time he comes to his senses he's dropped the seed right. and the seed is growing and because I don't want this to go the rest of the evening and it's already practically time to wrap up. Um I'll tell you up front, this is not going to have a long term effect. Oh, okay. Uh, can I try something? Sure. Okay. Uh, Captain Harrows, I'm going to need you to translate this for me. Okay. Take the priest aside, kick 16 different kinds of shit out of him, and tell him <laughs> if they come back and try and sacrifice the people of tranquility again, I'm going to tear their heads off and puke down their necks. If you could translate that verbatim, I'd appreciate it. I, I, I translate it as well as I can. And then after a pause, say, as you continue, my friends get less and less polite. Um, how badly damaged was the one I whacked against the tree? Um, how badly damaged do you want him to be? Pretty badly damaged. Put some broken All right. Bones. Uh, broken ribs, a couple of um, maybe like a broken I'll, I'll hip. Have... I mean, like he can't walk on his own. <laughs> I'll, I'll then I'll have uh, Captain Harrow's translate. Um, notice what I did to your friend, and yeah. I wasn't even as angry as I could have been. Yes, my friends get less and less polite as time goes on. <laughs> Tranquility is protected. At some point, they will simply just surrender and say, you know, if you're going to capture us and go sacrifice us, do that. No, 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 no. no, no. I yeah. think we should do worse than that and let's just leave them here. No, 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 no. You're not worthy of yes, sacrifice. No, we, have, we have two options. We have two worthy. options. We just let them go as unworthy. Or we use them as a down payment on the half dozen with the hag. Oh, fish. You. Oh. Not I, I won't even stoop no. that low. Okay. You never would do that. Come on now. No way. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, no, I can see it now. Atalanta, the, the female of the group, just walks along and just cuts their ropes and goes, You're not worthy. Right. <laughs> Their language. In their language. You're not worthy. Run home. You make them cry. <laughs> and, if you, and if and I'm the one who's like, you know, taking down, uh, you know, shot down one of their own. And like. Yeah, this is this is the little female of the bunch. <laughs> Can I just call hey, you? Yeah, the, say the, they're not worthy. The two the two priests have been beat. <clears throat> Nine tenths to shit. <laughs> so they they literally have to be carried back to wherever these guys came from. They don't have their rides anymore. They don't have provisions anymore because those have run off into the jungle. <laughs> yeah. They are coming back as failures because they don't have the prisoners that they were going to sacrifice. And you have made abundantly clear that you could kill them if you wanted to. You could sacrifice them if you wanted to, but you don't deem them worthy of that. So the warriors, the warriors who are injured but not as crippled as the priests, they basically just flat out cry. They're, they're just they are crying because they have failed so completely. 
<laughs> and they are going back to uh, Chickamas Talk in shame, where they will probably be sacrificed. Sacrificed. Probably, yeah. I, so, yeah, um, I, um, my response is <clears throat> we could always sell them to the hag. No, I'm not stooping that low. <laughs> nah. And after that, gather up the, the released hostages and carry them on home. You <laughs> like, know, there's always flying fire. back from the time or something. <laughs> there's six of them. You can't really, you know. Well, it's only like five or six miles. Yeah, so yeah, once they're injured, just let, we can all walk back. Yeah, it's only like five, six miles. Yeah. I mean, you, you literally were, they were only an hour ahead of you, so, initially. So, all right, you get back to town. Damn it. I really thought, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't intended this. I intended you'd have to, like, track them through the, no, no, because you've got super speed. We think so, outside the box. <laughs> so, rather than this being a three or four day adventure and you come back, no, no, it's, you've been gone for three hours. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. like, hey guys, did we miss lunch? <laughs> Oddly enough, <laughs> when you... Okay, it's more like four or five because five to six miles is a lot for a person walking through the woods. Fair enough. So yeah. by the time you get back, lots of people in the town have gotten sick. That's because uh, we'll, we'll cover that next week. But lots of people in town have started to come down with like nausea and, and chills and fevers and uh, so that's what you'll be dealing with uh, okay I gotta figure out what they're eating drinking or near or, or, or whatever the hell I didn't comment okay Tag. Uh, right I was just saying all the delicious, yep an attack microbe mm -hmm. or magic um. I check Georgie's sensors, mm -hmm. and if and if he and if I can't figure out a way to make a hag sensor, I'll work on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, Georgie has a full sensor suite. I am good. I, I want to like put eyes and ears up on the roofs and have Georgie become my surveillance when I need. To okay, contaminated, contaminated grain. Okay, contaminated. Okay. Grain. All right. Well, I'm getting. I need to go to bed. So. Okay, we're wrapping up. Here we go. Okay. And this. Nope, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> what do you want, kitty cat? You don't tell me the music's not working again. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> he was distracted by a cat. I was distracted by a cat. Why is it not playing? It's not responding. It says it's not responding right there. God damn it. That's there we go. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he started doing this like three times a day. This is Ben, Pirates of the Mesozoic, with Craig Smith, Donald Von Griffin, Karen Torres, Leslie Tenenberger, Lynn Montgomery, Brandon Blackmore, I, 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 I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Uh, Thank you for playing. You can oh, yeah, really. people can move really damn fast in this group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we will just the, the, for, 